We are recording. Where's my favorite part? Who the fuck are you? I'm Jesse. And I am Cody. And today we have a recent favorite at the Hollywood Comic Festival, Brett Forte. You said that with a lot of confidence. I, you truly believed in I it. I half forgot. I, really I forgot it right at the beginning, and then I was like, is it festival? <laughs> is it? And then, is That's literally- how they bring you up on stage there, too. You paint a picture. Everyone thinks L.A. is like... Like, it's only the cream of the crop performing? No. There's thousands of comedians there. So it's also the gutters at the same time. So you get a, a mixture of all. And you get people that bring you up on stage worse than how you introed me on this podcast. <laughs> that they g- don't can't even... get much worse than that. They go, this guy's from uh, Canada, I think. Uh, give it up for him. So no real, Ooh. like, help there. Right. Uh, <laughs> a host in the States is the lowest-ranked comedian, but a host up here in Canada... Uh, is right there in strength with the headliner, and that's kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you get that you get that feel too, right? Like the host runs the show, pretty much, and like yeah. you exceptions to the rule. Obviously, some nights you know you're going to have new hosts and experienced headliners, but a lot of Fair time enough. it's pretty close. Yeah, that's cool. How were the clubs in LA? Um, so it's hard to Are crack they... into, but slowly we're scraping in. Um, so Comedy Store was actually the first one. Did you get there to play? Yeah, so I've done the original room uh, twice, and I've done the main room now once. Wow. And so main room, man, I'm actually like, actually still nervous even thinking about retelling the story. It was very nervous. I got on two hours into the show on a Sunday night. So you're dealing with a lethargic crowd, and it's a young crowd, but it's late, and it's a Sunday, and it's it's two hours of comedy. I got to follow Tony Hinchcliffe. Oh, good luck. So I come out of the curtain. There's like this step, like a foot drop Mm -hmm. uh, right where the curtain is. And so you like stumble on stage. And then literally the week I get back, I see on Instagram a highlight reel of comedians that have fallen on the main (laughs) stage and ate shit, like twisted their ankles and shit. Do they do that shit on purpose? Is there no like sign that says, hey. It's I, maybe it's a part of the animal house culture that is that place. Yeah. Like, oh, one day we'll show you the back room where... You know, Steve Martin did cocaine off Richard Pryor, right? Oh. There's these kind of stories. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. <clears throat> no, of course, of course. It wasn't cocaine. They're like, let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, I got like eight minutes, I think, seven or eight minutes. That's and, and I that's, held, that's held big, my own. right? Like, that's, like, that's, yeah. per- that's good. Like, don't. Like, just getting there. No, I, I'm not diminishing it by the minutes. I'm just trying to paint a picture. That's and say, cool. Oh, that's no, impressive. that's, that's cool. what I had to do. I mean, they only do 15-minute sets there anyways. Right. It's different. Unless Dane Cook shows up. Right. <laughs> Everyone hates Dane now. Uh, so, is it so, do, they? Do, do they? Do they still not like him? If uh, When I say everyone, I mean the internet. Yeah, it's kind of the... He still gets a bum rap, yeah, I find, from certain I don't know groups what on the internet. He was on top. He was on top. It, Madison Square Garden. That's nuts. That's Kevin Hart big now. Like... Um, yeah, he he did his thing, and uh, and maybe I'm not educated well enough into well, why he had people that, hate he him. had that whole thing where he stole jokes from Louis C.K. Right, but then Louis C.K. had him on his show, and they completely I reconciled. I feel like if he makes it up well, with they, the person that he did it in with, in the scene it's... you're talking about, they didn't really fully reconcile. It was like they they talked ta- about they it, discussed it. And and they, what, what was the joke? It was I can't uh, remember that deep. Oh man, I can Google it. Yeah, do a Google that shit. Do a Google that, that shit. shit. I'll Google that shit. Because it but was something I, so petty. It was like, well, I talk about old people during this segment, and you talked about old people. Was it really? Because I didn't dive too deep down the rabbit hole. I just knew the ins and out because of yeah. other shows I've listened to. Yeah. I dove not too deep down, but the uh, when Joe Rogan went ape shit on... Carlos Mencia. Carlos Mencia. Yeah. Because they always talk about that on Joe's podcast, right? Because people always <laughs> come on and they're like, I love when you did that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And they're like, why? Yeah. And Dane Cook often comes up as well where they just kind of discuss the highlights of what happened with him. Okay. Well, yeah, he just all of a sudden disappears after making huge movies. Yeah. The, what good was luck, that? Chuck. That's a good flick. What was the one where he's working at Costco? That uh, was a fucking um, great movie. Uh, the dating one with Jessica Simpson, um, right? I think that's what it was. It was Dane Cook, Jessica Simpson, Jessica at- Alba. I know it was Good Luck Chuck. 
Yeah, but did he do? He did he did conquer the... all the Jessicas? Did uh, he go on a run? He might have gone. That's a on prolific a run. run. Dang, the he he did the Simpson Oscar. and the album back to back. What's left? Jessica, M- employee of the month. Simpson, That's Alba, Beal. Oh, Beal was left. Dang. Has he ever done a movie with Jessica Beal? That's another Google Cook, that shit. Jessica Beal. Did we get the answer on what? Um, Chuck and Larry was with Jessica yes, Beal. That's where she danced around in her ginch. London. They were in a movie together. They were? Uh, Dane Cook's done it all. He did some serious movies, too. Hatcher. Which was... I think Dane Cook's goes for that. La- did he do the uh, Jessica Hatcher? Yes, that's, imp- that's fucking impressive. That's what I'm talking about. And Stats. For, and for not to be having movies all over Netflix right now is... Like, how how's he not all over Netflix with specials? Well, he just... Did pe- he, who did he piss a, off? No, man. He just peaked in a different uh, generation. He was right before... Like, he was ahead of his time, I think. Speaking in the way that... Of, well, I don't know. On, I, let's not on, give him the Mark Twain award. Uh, guy, okay. right? Right. On different let's, generations. I'm a fluffer. That's right? what I do. A lot of the stuff that I've... Uh, a lot of comics that I know, they speak on on their inspirations being... All of, all of the older guys, but for you, because you're a younger comic, mm-hmm. do you have younger inspirations that are... Because your brand of comedy is is really kind of why you're here, mm-hmm. because we appreciate it. Nice. And it's not, it's PC. not soft. Mm-hmm. So who were, who were some of the people, if you were like, to understand my comedy, go listen to these people i'm not even gonna give it that filter man i that's probably not a good way because any name i say you know people can draw comparisons to my act to theirs and be like oh okay so that's where he gets that oh, from or something it's like Ugh. see that yeah i never Ugh. even thought about that like uh there's a point where you have to like okay. stop watching other comics and i was actually gonna ask it's like yeah. at, at what point do you get where it's like you don't want to watch anything like do you do you watch comedies do you like is there is there like <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm not how dead f- inside. I know, I know, but like, how far do you go to like avoid like, jokes? Okay, all right. <laughs> you, you, you think he's like Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he can't watch Just Armageddon ruins everything? He's like, <laughs> the shadows are fucked up. Gravity doesn't work <laughs> like that. You know? He, he's... Yeah, I'm not avoiding jokes, <laughs> uh, but stand up, like pure stand up, I'm a little bit uh, desensitized to. So okay. it's not as enjoyable, actually, even for me. Well, it's um, your job, right? I find way more enjoyment, like people watching and real life shit and seeing my own little moments and maybe even capturing them on film and maybe putting them on Instagram and maybe people losing their jobs at U-Haul because of it. <laughs> you know? Let's roll the dice. Uh, is there a story there? Absolutely. I just caught uh, footage of this woman uh, telling me a story. She's like, yeah, the last customer that came in here, he was saying this, that, and the other thing. So I stood up and I said, whoa, 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 whoa you want to go? You want to go? And she was like <laughs> acting it out. I can't remember word for word what she was saying. But she was being very animated. And I was like, well, why don't you get the fuck out of here, man? She was doing that with the fuck, like still saying it, but like dropping it like workplace appropriate. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. And I told him to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I just made a U-Haul commercial, like a 30-second ad that ended with like, U-Haul, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and just a slow-mo of her like going, what? You know? Just picture that. Like, that shit's beautiful. I've always wished I could have a recording of what I'm seeing day to day. I see some truly poetic things that so, I yeah, can describe. your inspiration is life. I enjoy that. Right. So, uh, pure stand-up, well, to other people, uh, is very, like, fucking right to the veins. Inject some jokes into me. Sentence by sentence, it's a little bit less potent to me. Interesting. I like yeah. the way you look at that. Yeah. That's Wow. See, you're the first. the room to a still. Who is fucking? You know who's poignant when. You're th- the thing is, you're the first comedian we've had on, Good. and I, I fuck, I mind fucked myself by reading some Jen Kirkman article article about like what not to ask comedians when they come on your show. And oh, it was just like what? the most fucked up. Hey, man, thing. I appreciate you doing that, man. I was a radio producer, uh, at like a ra- FM radio station. I had to produce a morning show. And I would uh, have comedians on on the Fridays from Yuck Yucks. And that's the reason why I'm a comedian now, because that was the only real part of the job I enjoyed in radio. Everything else was a shut door for me, creatively and everything, and I was too young. Is it and, like a bias in radio? Is there like a... Um, well, I don't know if it's just... First of all, like when you're coming out of school and you're a 20-year-old piece of shit and you look 20... 
you, it's hard to get respect. Fair, like, and you're, fair enough. And you're in an industry where it's like, nah, like you guys just need the jokes that are in my brain. You just need the ideas that are in my brain. I know the brain's being carried around by this disgusting fucking meerkat looking <laughs> millennial frame. I get it. <laughs> meerkat. But there's a fucking 47-year-old adult trapped inside with some good ideas here. I think I know what people like. And uh, I never got through that wall. No. So, uh, but the best part was uh, doing the interviews with the with the comics. And, yeah, I would do research on them. I would look into it. Yeah. That was fun for me to know, like, ah, maybe which questions can I ask that will open some maybe suspicions of my own. Like, I want to know a little bit more. I have some guesses. Do you have any uh, suspicions of me? That's what I'm trying to leave. <sighs> no, no suspicions, but it's like... Yeah, you know I, why? Because he's from questions. Edmonton, too. I'm not from Edmonton. Well, your dad is. At least a joke See? I heard. See? Now telling. that's research. So, Because Jesse brings it up every fucking episode that I was born in Edmonton. And in Calgary, it's not something you repeat often. How you would know my father's from Edmonton. How What wormhole you went down to find that. The, that's nice. There's some internet on you. That's like Hot Ones. <laughs> right? You guys watch that Hot Ones I on love YouTube? Hot Ones, yeah. dude. That guy it seems like he's known for almost every um, guest is like, hey, that's crazy. I've never been asked that before. Every single one just yeah. respects the dive that he goes into their life. He's and it's very like, vice. Yeah. Right? A, His he, team is amazing. He's a nerd <laughs> team? I think he's, he's got a, a huge team. He's a chicken wing nardwar. Yeah, nardwar. There you um, go. Define uh, nardwar. Do you know who oh. nardwar the hu- human serviette is? Nah, I don't know memes, bro. No, no. this is like dude. This is much from... music. Nineties, much music. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, my bad. Yeah, so nardwar's still around, and he's still he wore these giant like big shoulder plaid suits, and he'd interview people, but on a level that like like I think it's Snoop Dogg is like. He would well even to this day, Jesse. I've seen new ones where new artists he brings vinyl copies of albums that their dad was featured in, and they're like, "How the fuck did you get this?" My dad was featured on one rap album in 1984 right. in New York. We're C-I-A-D. on the <laughs> yeah, we're on the West Coast, and you brought me an album with my dad on the cover. How the fuck did you do this? Yeah. He's an incredible interviewer. I got but... the condom that broke the night you <laughs> yeah. were conceived. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> what? So, yeah, so he's a, he's a highly impressive highly impressive guy. But no, I was I was happy slightly to hear that there was an Edmonton tie. Yeah. Cody needs that Edmonton connection. Uh, he's not even like allowed back in Edmonton is what his story is. Shit. I know that's probably like exaggerated a bit. I, I don't it. think there's I, you know, I've been to Edmonton a million times. Uh, for work, so I know that there's no one like standing at the <laughs> entrance to Edmonton, like, mm. like checking cars. No, no. <laughs> I was nope. keeping an eye out for Brent. He was fucking. He was a madman in the '80s, and we don't want him back. Who wasn't though in the '80s? Like Edmonton, I feel like was just a crazy place yeah, in man. the '80s. It had to have been. I once met a guy with no legs collecting cigarette butts who once told me that he was the Wayne Gretzky of concrete finishing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had numerous questions. That's huge. Some that were never answered because well, I didn't get to ask them. But. Well, that's how you probably know my dad's from Edmonton, that story I tell, right? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. About him also pretending to be Wayne Gretzky. It's a very Edmonton thing to do. <laughs> to glorious. pretend like, to be Wayne Gretzky. Like what all of, they all do that. It's like, I'm the Wayne Gretzky. And they got away with it because no internet, it's no true. cell phones. <laughs> They're like, mm, okay. I guess. You could just say some shit in the 80s, like, in the dark, and people would listen. If you said it with enough authority and, like, knew what you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, you could. I dream of it. You could rewrite history. Business was a whole different ball game when there was no internet. A couple lines and everyone's like, yeah, let's go do business. (laughs) Just tell them anything. Fuck yeah. I agree with you. Well, my father was never into cocaine. So let's not put him in. No, there, oh, right? oh, this I, is didn't, guy, I didn't mean to paint him in that picture. This is a guy who actually once was at a party, and people were like uh, standing in the in the garage next to the washer and dryer. Okay, and my dad comes in to join the circle, and the only seat available is like right where the washer is. And he said there was some white powder. He thought laundry detergent, <laughs> and he just he just blew it all off and like hopped up on the washer, all smug. And everyone just slowly turned to him, like, 
what what the f- no, 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 no. First of all, who the fuck are you, right? Like, you're a guest at this party. I want to know who I'm going to kill in a second. My dad's like, oh, sorry, I thought it was laundry detergent. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm just here to hang. That's a fair assumption. I don't know how much you blew off. I don't really know the price of cocaine, but... uh I, mean, I don't know. To me, it sounded like uh, just a small little pile, like not much. Yeah, not, not enough to get you stabbed or anything. No, like he's still alive, well, so it I couldn't mean, have been hey, that big. Fucking a. Yeah, they're giving away coke in the eighties, right? <laughs> Miami was built on it. Uh, a city literally erected because. Isn't that, that crazy? I don't think it. I don't think people can actually conceive that thought. Like when you hear, "Oh yeah, Vegas was built with mob money." Okay. All right. But yeah, Miami is a a whole city. Cocaine Cowboys. Like, like great documentary. So good. Check it out if you haven't you've, seen it. Didn't you read what book did you? Oh, it wasn't about cocaine. You wrote um, what's that one you told black, me? Black uh, t- black tuna. Square box tuna. What the hell was it? That's sexy. <laughs> it's about the biggest pot smuggler in the U.S. Okay. Um, yeah, but anyways, sidetracked. <laughs> Coke, Miami. It's the best. I don't know. That's this beautiful city, right? Have you been? Uh, no. Looking forward to it. I'm just working on the U.S. visa right now. Yeah? It's not, Is it tough? It's not worth going. Uh, it's expensive. Yeah? I don't know if it's tough yet. Just begun the process. Ah. I'll let you know. Gotcha. Um, where it is, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to ignore the word is and see if uh, I can weasel my way. Are you good with that kind of stuff? Like, I think I'm a pretty good weasel. I weasel. The wink, the nudge, like, hey, you know, you help me out. Only child, lots of little stories growing up of figuring loopholes and, like, you know, some theft involved. But only because, and never from people. No, okay? of course not. Only stores, department yeah. stores. And only because I'm under 18 and I knew, like, oh, if I get caught, it's a slap on the wrist at under 18. That's yeah. the way society has drawn the line. So let's maybe <laughs> abuse line, the line yeah. sure. a little bit. Sure. If oh, that I includes, that. if that includes selling seven hundred dollars worth of marbles to a twelve-year-old, <laughs> what? <laughs> seven. Where does a twelve-year-old come up with seven hundred dollars? A thousand is what they had. <laughs> so they got a deal. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> grade twelve, uh, grade six, twelve years old. There's a kid who. Uh, I mean, I feel like I've told this. Oh, I told this on my podcast. It's all good. Never mind. I can tell this one. I feel like it's overplayed. But uh, this 12 year old, I was also 12. Relax. I wasn't an adult. <laughs> okay. This was last yeah. week. Uh, yeah. It's, it's fresh. <laughs> he had a big allowance, rich parents, got a, a hefty uh, allowance every week, and it added up to him having like $1,000 cash on him, just a stash at 12. And you'd always have all these toonies on him, and we would just go play. Tennis, we we had memberships at the local tennis club in a rich area, Scarborough. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, like, we would just use the time to sit cross-legged on the court eating ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> and then the adults would come and be like, hey, guys, we're going to play. And it's like, ah, no, like, we got it booked. We're members. <laughs> like, we had Miami <laughs> Coke money. <laughs> like, well, I was living, man. <laughs> this was the dream. Do and you I- not see my ice cream sandwich, lady? I'm not done. <laughs> oh, rappers like blown in the wind, like up against a chain link fence. And we're talking Klondike brand name, dude. Treating ourselves to brand name. The last time I, I bought myself a brand name ice cream sandwich, like a fucking asshole. Yeah, right. You get the vanilla generic one for 99 cents. Great value from and Walmart. And it's almost the same surface area or volume, whichever one you want to go with, as the brand name for like a third of the price. Yeah. It's a rip off. <laughs> The only one I spend the good money on is the Oreo one. Oh, you want that sugar? Yeah. Wow. That's what I'm looking for diabetes. That's potent. That's 10 out of 10 on the sugar. Yeah, He's not allowed sugar. So it's on cheat weekends. Yeah, the actual cookie of it often isn't even brittle. It's soft. It's so soft. Yeah. It's see, wonderful. Takes me out of the ice cream sandwich experience. Really? Now. Yeah. But isn't... I don't know I've had an ice cream sandwich with a... Crisp. Hard cookie. With a crunch? Yeah. Well, you ought to treat yourself. <laughs> it's probably like, you're not buying the shitty enough I brands. Spend 99 <laughs> like, cents. Yeah. yeah, see, there's an example of me learning to like something that's actually worse. Society said, oh, that's worse. And I'm like, no, I like it. Yeah. You just learn. Adapt to your surroundings. It's like 
for beer drinkers drinking like Pilsner. Yeah, a lot of people. Hey, yeah, I love watch, it. Watch don't don't get me wrong; it got me through a lot of hard times. Yeah, but did I hard mean, times lead you to seven? What was it? How much? Much seven hundred dollars worth of money. Okay, so he oh, fuck it. <laughs> has this money. Back to this. Just wanted to paint a picture of what the life he was living. That's crazy. And I was like, man, I gotta tap into this, right? What do I got? So I'm sitting cross-legged in my room, thinking, what do I got? What do I got to work with? I'm twelve here. You know, I have an and one basketball and some Ooh. marbles. Okay. And, you know, yeah, I'm picking up five, ten dollars a game playing people one on one with the N one ball at the park. That's not good cash. <laughs> Marbles, I'm like, you know what? This kid wants to be number one in everything. He wanted to be the fastest, the best at math or whatever, and he just never could cut it. Wasn't even top three. Ooh. And it was heartbreaking, you know? And uh I was like, you know what? I ought to create something he can be number one in. Spending his money. <laughs> So I looked at these marbles and I go, let's go. Let's spin something here. I don't know what you guys would come up with, but I like did it in such an offhand way. I just started bringing up. I was like, yeah, it's like that new marble collecting league, man. He's like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, huh? Like pretending like what? Oh, you asked what I knew you were going to ask? Oh, okay. Let me begin. That's a fucking smooth 12-year-old right there. Telling you, dude. 47-year-old man. Yeah. In that twelve year old, it, easy, that <laughs> easily, weird. like yeah, well, maybe not in the twelve year old. Well, that man was inside that twelve year old. Uh, Let me tell deep. you that. Um, so yeah, I just said, oh fuck, it's kind of like um, I don't know, man. They're like marbles, like the ones we see at the Toonie store, uh, except they're like the real editions. I guess what we've been buying are replicas. Well, like these are the original, so it's kind of like um, I don't know, diamonds to cubic zirconia. Like, they look the same, but they're, like, actually different. I fucking love this hustle. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. Like, I get it. And uh, Where do I find them? Exactly. He <laughs> said, where do I get them? Oh. And then I, in the moment, was like, oh, shit. I thought that was going to be, like, the, another day. I could think of that one. <laughs> Maybe, like, next week or some shit. <laughs> Not instantly. I thought I was spot. planting a seed, but this plant fucking ch 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 just came out. <laughs> just like... I was, oh. <clears throat> I was like, aha. Okay, where do you buy him? I was like, I got a guy. <laughs> and I was like, in my mind, give this guy a name, Brett. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> Ralph the Ralph. marble dealer. Ralph. And later I actually described Ralph as being in a wheelchair so that <laughs> so that he, this guy would not ask questions about him. You know what I mean? Just out of... <laughs> Sheer respect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Of the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> this fake guy, Ralph, was like, hey, dude, like he's in a wheelchair. Leave him alone. <laughs> Don't, don't fuck with yeah. Ralph, man. So <laughs> he said, "Where get him?" I go, "Okay, well, I got a guy, Ralph. Um, he sells them out of his shop. It's actually under another shop <laughs> on McLeod Trail." I said, "Oh, so you go in one store, but it's actually in the basement." Um, problem is, is like I don't think he's gonna sell them to you. Like these are kind of hard to come by. Like they're rare. They're like. I don't know. This is new and it's not out to the public yet, you know? So I don't know if he's just going to sell them to you. So I started giving, I started putting up hurdles, like really like <laughs> milking my sale here, like wanting him to want it more. Like, no, give it to me. Just seeing those dollar What signs. do you mean I can't have it? <laughs> okay. You know what? Maybe there's a way. Maybe I'll buy them for you. Yeah. Can you please? Dude, you do such a solid. You do me such a solid. So why are you so good with Ralph? Well, Ralph's not real. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Ralph. Yeah, but there was no question of like, hey, how do you Dude, know he's Ralph? he's in a wheelchair. Why are you asking so many questions about him? You're right. I'm sorry. Back off. Yeah. See how that shuts down yeah. right there? Yeah, you're like, you're you're totally right. I'm he's blind. <laughs> he's blind too. <laughs> he's missing a leg. <laughs> so uh, that was the story. That was established. And yeah, there was actually no more questions after that. That's all the setup I had to do. And then I just had to set my prices. <laughs> Right? What do you do? Like, I think I got to imagine. I don't really remember it clearly, but I got to imagine the first one. I was like, f- uh, f- five. You're creating a market. Five dollars, like for a boulder. He's like, how much? I probably, I was like, f- f- five dollars. You know, in my head, going like, whoa, five for one. The whole bag was two. Twelve whoa, years old. Come man. on. And Mitch just being like, yeah, sure. And then going, like, ah, fuck. Could have, could have went higher. 
And so I guess I did that up until the height of, of it was $30 for one boulder steely marble. A steely was actually a ball bearing from Home Depot. <laughs> I would buy it from Home Depot. <laughs> My operation was expanding, dude. I had to look for other importers. <laughs> the dollar store wasn't uh, supplying my business <laughs> they're like you're in here every weekend buying all of our yeah, marbles yeah I had to dude. expand my borders that's incredible so I went international um, <laughs> to the depot we went public yeah. that day <laughs> that's sweet <laughs> we were in 30 IPO. bucks a fucking 30 dollars for like a big ball bearing that probably like legit cost like probably 395 oh at home God, depot oh dude that I love your racket I love it. So it got to about four hundred dollars in the pocket. So not just like all four hundred bucks at once, but it's just mm. nickel and at, or I hear ten and twenty. A typical them. sale would be about seventy dollars. Yeah, fuck? it was probably about ten hauls at seventy. Wow! And I would transport them to him in uh, empty protein powder containers from my dad. Who would also give me a ride there, and I'd have to cut him in on the money a little Oh, bit. he knew? Yeah, yeah. yeah my dad knew, knew the, yeah. the score. Oh. Dude, he's like, okay, so he's like, I'll drive you to the different dollar stores so you can get different like styles of marbles, right? That's amazing. He was my manager, That's and he amazing. was getting 10%. There you go, dad. Right? That's dad of the year. Driving around in a 1990 Ford Tempo GL. Low key. Shout out to Tempos. Ford Tempos. Yo, this maniac, quickly. Beautiful cars. It was a red one, and it was getting- Red or maroon? Maroon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, they weren't fucking red. <laughs> no. Well, well let the me tell you. Ugliest version of red. <laughs> At the end of the story, they were. Ooh. Okay. Because it's fading, and he's like uh, unrusted, you know? So he's like, okay, we're going to paint the car. And, you know, money's tight, and my dad is the king of being frugal, so we're not taking it to Mako Fuck that. for four ninety nine. Ha ha ha. Yeah, right. We're going to Canadian Tire. We're buying 12 cans <laughs> of Ford, like, maroon spray paint. <laughs> they sell it? Yeah. <laughs> you match it. You color match it. There's a code. There's a whole book. And you, like, look up the year of your car, your make, and it tells you exactly the color code that was used. <laughs> you go to the aisle... You read the number, you buy twelve cans at eight ninety five each. <laughs> That's okay. way cheaper. So what are we than at? We're at like ninety. We're at just over a hundred dollars. Yeah. A couple cans of uh, clear coat, maybe four cans of clear coat for the shine, for the luster at the end. Right. Yeah. Okay. Gotta so we're at a hundred and something dollars, hundred and forty, let's say. Sure. Uh, and then now you some sandpaper. Let's get some new sandpaper. One fifty. Uh, maybe a, a mask. It. You know. Maybe. We're keeping it under 200 is what I'm saying. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. Now we drive it to the local church parking lot okay. with our green tape and our newspapers. You and we block tape, the windows yeah, off. Windows, mags, all of it. Why the church, though? Yeah, parking lot. We live in an apartment. We it's, can't do it in the back alley. It's dusty. Gotcha. It's got to be an open area. Open yeah. area. Okay. Yeah. Paved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the church doesn't ask questions. And there's a hoop next door. Let's go. So... We are taping it up. We do the job. <laughs> no surprise. It's shit. It's real bad. <laughs> it's almost as if a middle-aged man and a 12-year-old did it <laughs> in a church parking lot with paint from Canadian Tire. It looked like that. <laughs> was it at least like car spray paint, or was it just like the same color but spray paint? Same color, like technically the code, but like it's after not car the paint, right? And, yeah, it just You was... were rather close is what you were saying. <laughs> You know, That's well, like twelve-year-old learning how to spray paint. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of hard spots right in the. Right no, in the I wasn't head. in charge of actual spraying. Uh, fair enough. I mean, no, you, no, no. That's my father. Your dad seems like Broad a smart strokes. guy. Yeah, Broad your dad strokes. seems like a smart guy. Yeah, why give it to the child? Right? True. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, man, it looked terrible, and it didn't have any luster. The clear coat wouldn't work. We even bought a few more cans. This tempo wouldn't shine, and, to, and then my father said, "You know what? I got an idea." We tried new finish. We tried wax. We tried it all. We tried Rain-X. Rain-X. <laughs> um, shout out to the Center Street Car Wash. <laughs> Up by uh, 16th Avenue and Center Street. I work right near there. Dude, that one? That's got a lot of Rain-X. A lot of wax, too. You put your dollar in, you get hefty wax. You can tell by when you uh, get water on your windshield. Is it bead or not? That's how you know if any wax came out. 
Oh, yeah. Right? And sometimes you pay for wax and nothing comes out. This place, heavy on the wax. Potent. So you're pretty frugal, dude, right? Absolutely. I'm not big in the car washing, so that's good to know. So, you know. So, he's tried it all. He goes, he goes inside. He gets a bottle of olive oil, <laughs> which he drinks by the bottle. What? It's got to make your poop hard. He pours it into a, a tablespoon. He'll drink it by tablespoon, just like straight. And then sometimes he'll pour out like a half a cup into uh, into a cup, you know. <laughs> and then he adds uh, orange juice to dilute. But this is a uh, a way, this is like a poor man's Metamucil. If you're bunged up from all the protein powder. Oh, so it makes you go. Poor man's Metamucil, and oh. it just lubes the system. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> and if you put it into orange juice, apparently it's more palatable. Okay. Fair, Fair enough. enough. Also, it's 110 calories per tablespoon. <laughs> and we're talking, if we want to gain size, which if we're raised in the 80s, of course we do. We always want that pump. Let's get wide here. My father's got 62-inch shoulders. Whoa. Which, yeah, see, you guys like... You weren't joking when you said your father has broad shoulders. Shout out to you guys going whoa and respecting that. If I say that... Anywhere else, people are like, what does that mean? People measure their shoulders. <laughs> no, that's big. They're like, I'm at 24. <laughs> like, like, that's width? huge, like, dude. Width? <laughs> no. Because no. we also measured width up against the wall. You guys have like a height chart growing up in your house? Hell yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. By the front door or some shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a section of the wall for my dad's <laughs> width. I had to measure my father's width of his shoulders. He'd stand still. I'd take the meter stick What's on my one wingspan? side. What's my wingspan? What's my wingspan? No, no, no flare. No flare. <laughs> Kept it honest. He never flares. Oh, perfect. He'll flare because he's did he flex he's though? Did he like? I did... hate guys who have muscle and want to f- show it all the time and make it aggro. Losers. Quit twitching at me, bro. Keep you it know? in pencil. Keep it behind the coat rack. Just have the <laughs> measurement there on the wall. Okay, we Light know. Pencil. And I think it was twenty three and three quarters was actually his measurement for width. His his final measurement. But imagine like starting at twenty two inches and going up to like twenty four, like. 13 ticks throughout the years. That's crazy. Showing man. just like two inches of width. So how much did he work out? Um, every third day, heavy. Heavy? For the whole goddamn day. But only every third day. Yeah, so he's not like muscle book ripped. We'll get back to Mitchell Stevenson's marbles, but he's not. <laughs> we digress. That's our thing. Uh, yeah, so he, by the way, he gets the olive oil. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And so he drinks it for calories. Makes him poop. Mm-hmm. It's good for the system. Wash your hair with it. You can do a lot with olive oil. And apparently, you can wax a four tempo with it. <laughs> and that's what he did. I forgot he about put that. Out, he put olive oil on a rag, and he rubbed that thing in, in the back alley of 12th Ave and 17th Street one summer day. And did it actually shine it up? And that tempo came alive. It was Ferris Bueller's Day Off fucking candy Ferrari Red. Get out, dude. All of a sudden, I'm wearing a Gordy Howe jersey, and I'm like, let's go get Ferris. Let's go get Ferris, Dad. <laughs> um, And yeah, we took it for a cruise, and I'll always remember, we're on 4th Street. 4th Street and like 22nd Avenue, we pull up to a red light, and a woman, middle-aged, like 55, blonde hair, she looks over at us on a summer day, windows down, and she yells, Nice car! Who it was it? a tempo? And we look out. We're in a 1994 tempo GL spray painted in the parking lot <laughs> of a church. Shout out to St. Mary's Church. <laughs> and uh, and she wow. yells, nice car in public. That is the greatest compliment. Was it condescending or was it like no, a legit man. like No nice one would car. ever. Who, who would ever you, say you that? You don't need to, to yell that at yeah. a tempo. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No That's respect. That yeah. Dude. Olive oil. Olive oil. First lap with it. You know when you buy like a new article of clothing and you get the compliment like out of the gate? Yeah. Like, oh, hey, nice shirt. And you're like, nailed it. Dude. It's it so was true. that moment <laughs> with, the, with the, it all, it was all worth it. Now, t- olive oil actually isn't really cheap wax. You know, it's $10 a bottle. Yeah, I guess not. It right? takes a bottle. The tempo's thirsty. Yeah. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Turns into the most expensive wax job you can buy. Uh, she was nice though, and we sold it for like a thousand dollars more than it was worth in the in the did bargain it last? binder. Did oh the, yeah, did, yeah. Did, we did... always dump our vehicles at like one hundred and eighty thousand kilometers or or one fifty, so that there's still like 
um, nice on right the market, now. but then we don't have to deal with any of the bullshit that comes after. Yeah, that's my, smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very smart. My dad's got to figure it out. That's Dude, right where I'm sitting. That's cool, man. So Sell. this is the mentality that is uh, given to me and leads me to this marble situation. And at about $400 into this um, exchange, um, he calls me, landline. He goes, Brett, you got to get up here. He's in the rich neighborhood just above me in Scarborough. I'm with the commoners down in Sonalta <laughs> with the rapist. The Beltline rapist was my neighbor. Like, okay? so we, yeah, it's we like, got, we've got to talk about that after. It's like the Calgary uh, Compton versus, you know, Beverly Hills. Right, 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 right. Um, <clears throat> so he's up in Beverly. You got to come up here and see what I found. Like, gives me that kind of hook. I'm like, what is it? He's like, just wait. And it's like, whoa. Like, hustler? Like, what is it? Uh playboy you know find something good something good some action here get some titties right and i walk right into it and again i'm unprepared and he's like look and he's got a bag of marbles still in the net they're in the net which means they're from the dollar store Uh uh-oh i don't present my marbles in the net okay (laughs) (laughs) you get a nice little nice little glass dish okay i dress them up (laughs) I go, fuck, they're in the net. They got the $2 fucking sticker on them. And they're the same marbles I sold them yesterday. (laughs) Same brand, same kind. (laughs) Oh, fuck. So he goes, I went to the dollar store and I found these. (sighs) Oh, God, it's all coming down. It's like it's going to happen right now. It's all going to blow up in front of my face. Did you ball your fist? I am. I'm tight, dude. Ooh. Of course I'm clenched. And I, there's no way I can take this guy. He's bigger than me. Um, and he's rich. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm in his house. Like, it's, it's going to have to be some fast talking here or some fast moving. <laughs> Just <laughs> fucking run. <laughs> he says, uh, I found these at the dollar store, the same ones you sold me yesterday. But get this. These are only two bucks. We got to go clear them out. And I go, oh, I've dodged it. <laughs> Let's do this. But it's still not over. It's still not over. <clears throat> Where are his parents? Because in all of if this? I go along with this and I go, yeah, like I'm losing out on a lot of profits here, you know? Yeah. It's like, okay, it's over. And now we can just go to the store for $2. I can't really make a profit out of this anymore. All right. So I have to somehow prove this theory wrong. <laughs> and I go, let me see these marbles. And I grab this net. And I break it open. And I go, huh. Oh, yeah. Fuck. You know what? Yeah, I'll give it to him. That's a pretty good job. Here, hand me one I sold you yesterday. Huh? Just give me one I sold you yesterday. Okay. Gives me one. I go, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, um, I mean, it, the difference is slight. I'll give it to him. It's a nice job. But Mitch, here, you feel these marbles. You're a smart guy. You're a smart guy, Mitch. I like <laughs> told him he's a smart guy <laughs> okay i'm a smart guy <laughs> you're a smart guy mitch you tell me you tell me i'm not gonna tell you you come up with the answer mitch does this one not have better luster <laughs> i said luster swear to god <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? swear to god i said luster i knew the word luster when i was 12 and i knew i needed it in this moment Jeez. you feel the luster right Feel the luster. And I do, yeah. Do you feel luster? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I might have said, like, it's got better luster. I don't know how I phrased it. Still. Said luster. All good. And now I have to release these marbles into his hands <laughs> and hope I'm a hypnotist. <laughs> I'm certainly <clears throat> believing that I'm one. So I release it into his hands. And he grabs him, and I'm releasing him like a fucking curler releases the final <laughs> rock. Shot stone. Draw the button. Sweat just <laughs> sticking between the handle and my finger when I release. And he grabs him, and he starts nodding his big, dumb head. <laughs> and he's like, yep. Holy shit, dude. You're right. And I'm like, you fucking idiot, man. You wow. would have put those in the bin. <laughs> With the rest of them, I'd be here all night sorting the good from the bad. You're lucky I saved your ass. Give me these. We threw them in the garbage. Tell you what, next day, or not, not next day, on my way out, after hanging with them, yank them out of the garbage, <laughs> sell it back to them a week later. Oh, 
Oh my Jesus Christ, Price man. Price hike. <laughs> and then, so with that money, that's seven hundred dollars. Yeah, what did that go towards? I'll tell you what. A young Leo Savers account at my local RBC with interest compounded uh, ended up getting me a down payment on a condo at the age of 22. So, no fucking way. I swear to God. No fucking I swear way. To God. No. Am I exaggerating? Absolutely. Did oh. I, was when I was 12, I was like, I'm going to buy a condo when I'm 22. <laughs> like, I didn't. <laughs> I'm setting my future up right now. I was just right like, now. I know. Let's put it away. Yeah, that's. And sit on it. And then when it came to 22, it was like, oh, I know what we can do. That's amazing, dude. That is such an amazing story. It's a come up. That's just about as good as trading paper clips. I like that. You did that? No, but I know the story of the guy. Oh, trading up, you mean? Like yeah. Like finally getting something huge? Yeah. That's sweet. I, I like the way I you did that, I used to sell though. fake earrings. I like the way you ripped that child off and lied to him <laughs> and no, 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 pretended to be his friend while stealing from him. Uh, I was going to say, how long did that friendship last? Was that just kind of like you still well, summer of 12, or is this like well, a funny story we when talk it crashed, like it did come down. There did was it? a confrontation. It was the Bitcoin market. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Marble coin, dude. Oh, marble yeah, coin. Yeah, big crash. Hashtag marble uh, Not hashtag And hashtag just like trademark. Bitcoin, everyone yeah. found out it wasn't real, right? <laughs> like, oh, figment of our imagination. <clears throat> it happens. So, uh, yeah, at $700 in th- into the operation, we're lined up for a uh, class in elementary. That's You'd like stack up like military, like outside of the yeah. door, yeah. wait for the other class to come out, and then your line would go in. Like remand center, like yeah. prison. It was yeah. awful. Very strange how they, but it was the only way to control us, I guess. Mm-hmm. Hey, and we were the last people who were sane on this planet. Huh? We're the last, like, our age group. Because you were born in 90 something. Two. 92. Piece of shit. No, no. 95 and above are the real pieces of shit. Yeah, all right. That's the all true right. pieces of shit. Oh, yeah, I like no, that. I'll agree. Uh, I was 85. He was 86. You're 92, so 85 to 95. We're the embarrassed generation. Should be. I feel, Should of our be. own. Of our own. Yeah. Um, so I forgot where I was going well, we were with lined this, up, but right? it, that's the thing. We were lined up. We have structure. Okay. Other fuckers don't have structure. Are there no lo- more lineups in school? I don't think so. For class? Not no, unless no it's like- in the hallway for your bag? Not unless it's something like- the fire alarm's going. I, I don't know. To be fair. Are you allowed to punish kids know. anymore? I thought if you like no. yelled at them, you're no, in no, trouble. No, no, you're not allowed. My wife's a teacher. You're not allowed to uh, punish kids. That's not. You know, the story I just told you is like, uh, well, I guess the one I have to complete. Uh, when we were lined up, he came out in his line. And all he said next to me as he's walking in the line. Picture a 12-year-old walking with his face turned forward. And like all of a sudden his voice got deep. Like he hit puberty. Between four hundred and seven hundred dollars of the climb. Uh oh. So now, like, it was, now the odds are even more stacked against me. He had this big Adam's apple, like a fucking, <laughs> like a steel marble sticking out of his throat. You know, he got big quick. Um, and he walks by slowly. And he goes, "I want all my fucking money back." He was Vin Diesel. Oh Jesus! He was Vin. I want all my fucking money back. <sighs> I'm in line, sweating. Oh, my God. People in line in front of me and behind me are, like, looking at me like, what the fuck was that about? Like, <laughs> Did anyone else know about the racket or was it, like, a no, closed No, no, no. You keep did, it. Sh- you yeah. keep it. Hush. Yeah. Did he start to wonder why he was the only motherfucker who knew about marbles? Because. Yeah. N- yeah, yeah. Because here's the thing. Like, what was marbles. working in my favor is he was also shy and introverted. So he didn't have what it takes to, like, be, like. So what about marbles, guys? Like, to even bring it up himself? Right. He was just <clears> waiting until <throat> it naturally came, and I kept that hush-hush. Fuck. Hey. And, po- uh, and of course, you keep it hush-hush, because the more people you involve in the plan, you exponentially, your odds of getting caught are going down. Yeah. Like, you uh, found your golden pony. Look at Ocean's Eleven. They got caught. You should know, of people. all people, Terry, someone in your casino is always <laughs> watching. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. It. Eleven people. You're looking like at a, a guy much. who downloaded the Ocean's Eleven soundtrack to go gambling to to listen to Ocean's Eleven soundtrack to increase my odds at roulette Get to out. see that wheel go slower, and it did. I could see like no it was way. like a music video, man. I really <laughs> felt good. That's cool. And then I was told to take the headphones out in Baccarat. I was playing, oh. and headphones are in. And he goes, oh, "You can't be listening to those." 
And I went, oh, no, it's just to communicate with my spotter across the room. <laughs> You're a joke. He goes, yeah, exactly. Like, that's why you can't have it. And I was like, to be honest, I'm just listening to music. And he goes, okay, what kind of music? And the whole table, like, looks at me. And I'm like, ah, Ocean's Eleven soundtrack. <laughs> And no one laughed. No one laughed. And I was like, what? Like, I only do this shit for the story. I thought this was awesome. I thought this was funny. And everyone was, like, worried for me. And the guy's like, yeah, I can't allow that. <laughs> you know? Well, was thinking, there like, an off chance he was going to let you listen to it? If it like, he I think liked if I would have said the right band or whatever. S Club 7. Is there it's a... Billy Joel. Oh, Billy Joel is universally it's, loved. It's Piano Man. You know Piano Man? Like, I don't know, uh, okay, fine. It was a bomb. It was a public bomb, and it happens. I think maybe because of like everyone thought like you were about to get arrested, maybe. Ah, because you I said don't know. something about your spot. Society or... soft. When you said that you were in L.A. and you play, like, there's all sorts of styles of talent. What's it like? Have you followed somebody who is just shit the bed? Because everyone, oh. ev- everybody's oh. bombed. Oh, you. you do that all the time no matter where but you go. what is it like following somebody who is bombed well the pressure is the lowest it can be it's actually kind of a good thing I, yeah that makes sense <laughs> and if you want to be a prick like and if, there's, if there's if there's something it? to say that's maybe i don't know you gotta play it respectful like you shouldn't be digging at other comedians but when they bomb like i recently had that moment on my show my roast battles that i host at yuck yucks the headliner that went at the end it's not an easy spot to headline because you are following a late show that starts sometimes as late as 10 30 by the time you're getting on stage it's 11 10 11 30 okay it's getting up there yeah people are already arriving to the late show drunk too right and then drinking more That's attention tough. spans are going to be the lowest and to boot you're also following a show that's kind of like rowdy and ruckus and the material the whole night has been. What's well, a roast battle? You've heard right? abortion like... four times. You've heard <laughs> Jew. Uh, every I don't know why I put abortion and Jew <laughs> at the same <laughs> ranking. But you've heard all these trigger words. You're thoroughly warmed up and the bar is set for a certain com- style of comedy. And if you come out and be beta, you be soft – or your material, no matter how good it is, is like too PC, too weak, or whatever. Not that those are the same things. You, no, like, funny, no. funny comedy or very clean comedy can be very funny comedy. Oh hell yeah! But uh, who's it's it? Tough. Jim Gaffigan. It's very tough. Is it Jim Gaffigan. It's I think. way tougher. Jim Gaffigan. I, yeah, I think he's like all clean. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he would have no problem, but it's a tough one. I see what you're getting out there. Anyway, so he doesn't do good at all to the point where he is every couple minutes on stage like, it's okay, guys. Just It'll, I'm al- it'll almost be done soon. It's okay. <laughs> so I went to the d- dentist the other day. Guys, just it would be like seven more minutes, I think. Um, just We're almost Ooh. there. Um, and you know as a dentist, right, because he comes in. You've been waiting there, and um, I'll be done in a second, guys. And so he's waiting, or I'm waiting, and <laughs> he's bobbing. Oh. He's bobbing. That'd be me doing comedy. That would be me telling a joke on stage. I'm grinning. I'm laughing. Okay. All comedians were like, this is a part of the game. We all go down. Mm -hmm. Some more than others. (laughs) Some less than others. Uh, And so, but it's my show, man. And like, uh, that means I just put 20 minutes of like shit on the stage. Hell yeah. So it's a roast battle and it's like, uh, when I when he's done, he's like, "Have a good night, everyone." You're supposed to just like shake the hand and be like, "Ah, oh, one more time for him. Thanks for coming." But instead, I was like, "Ah, hey, you know what? Sit on the stool. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Have a seat. Ah, don't go anywhere. Take a seat. You know, let's talk about that performance. <laughs> let's break this just stuff. to leave the audience, hopefully leaving with a laugh or leaving with something to talk about out the door. You know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man." I'm trying to put on a show here. It's a part of it. Am I, are me and that comedian ever going to be friends moving forward? No. He's probably not jumping at any opportunities to work with me ever again. <laughs> uh, but, like, that's a bridge burn for hopefully 
something nicer built on the other side. Hey. I don't know. You know, sometimes the... I enjoy your bravery to do shit like that because I would never... Like, that's what I... The one thing... Not one, but one of the things, I guess I should say, that I really appreciate about comics and stand-up comedy in general is that you guys get up there and do it, right? The fact that you're just up there and you're technically there to be judged. We're there to see if you're funny or not. Yeah. That's really what we're there to do. Laugh, mainly, right? Mm -hmm. That just takes something that i really appreciate in a human like it's it's really it's really humbling to to know someone who's just like for me there i would completely avoid what could be potentially confrontation yeah and you look at it as a great opportunity to (laughs) make other people laugh and it's a i didn't see it as a great opportunity it's like let's not paint a picture that it killed or anything sorry a opportunity i got some laughs and to me, that was good enough. Probably like, more okay. than he got. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so, uh, I don't know. You, in hindsight, it probably wasn't worth it. I don't think anyone's talking about it except me on this podcast. Hey, well, now, like, three or four other people will talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you make mistakes. And uh, I don't know. I'm not so conscientious of other people's feelings. Okay. Like, yeah. And ugh. I feel like that, that guy should also understand that he bombed and that that's part of the career. And it's funny that you saved it and that you brought the crowd back. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how he'll say, say it well, to mean, his friends. No, and yeah. then Brett saved the show. Yeah. He'll say. I mean. He Probably. Had. You know that fucking Forte guy <laughs> out in Alberta? <laughs> yeah. He saved the show is how he'll phrase it. He saved my ass. Yeah. I wasn't yeah, doing probably well. not, but <laughs> hey, I enjoyed it. You made me laugh right? with it. And that's... Uh, and that's my audience, not the other comedians. No, and that's the thing. That's The audience pays your bills. Have yeah, you, yeah. Have you seen roast battles get ugly? Like, does that happen? Yeah. Does it get, Is it, like, to the point feelings. where everyone's just like, feelings. we're done. Feelings. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because it turns Hurt. out, oh, yeah. Yeah. like, it starts out fun, obviously, and that's kind of its intent. There's so many guys that are so right-headed about it, and it's like a celebration. And then after the show, they're like, okay, what did we have left over? Like, let's all share what we had left over for each other and, like, laugh and be like, oh, you should have said this, you know? Like, it's a community. It's very cool. Right, right. And then there's, like, people that have gone in treating it like a UFC fight, survival up there. Shit. And, like a rap uh, battle. Yeah. And if you're inexperienced at it, you have a tendency to probably take things. Um, you're going to be a little bit more defensive. No, that's not true. Saying things like that. Really? Oh. <laughs> and it's like, hey, even if it's not true, just fucking laugh it, about it. We're at funny. a comedy show. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's. Unless your next lines are, that's not true because, and then a punchline. Yeah. I mean, that's not true. He's lying. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't know what that is. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Yes. Oh man, and I'm the one laughing the hardest at the back when I see that. I really like. Yo, I put my best friend on on the stage. Uh, Comedian? No. Oh no. Oh. So so how does a roast battle work then? Is this two comedians going at it, or do right, you back and forth, five jokes each, and uh, you're allowed to rebuttal in the moment um, without it counting towards your joke total? But yeah, okay. it's like a back and forth kind of like. Uh, framed argument back and forth. You you don't uh, the other guy doesn't know your jokes or anything. You're coming preparing for up to a month writing on someone. Okay, Not so just you someone. know your opponent. You're writing three uh, on three other people because I do a bracket of four. And then when you win out of those four, you're now the number one contender, and you can face the champ next show. Nice. And every show ends with the champ versus a number one contender. Nice. And uh, so, for example, Dan Frazier, who's a cop, a Calgary police officer, which is so dope. That's cool. Yeah. Worked with them, done uh, shows for all policemen in the room, 100 cops and their spouses. It was one of the best shows ever. Um, calling them pigs to their face and Jesus. then loving it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then, so he did, he's the champ. And it took him overtime to win it, and then he just defended it again in triple overtime. This guy, by the skin of his teeth, he's getting through. Um, and the point of this is... Uh, the brackets. The brackets, right. So he is just uh, taking on these number one contenders in a row. And uh, so far, he's defended it. So Sam Walker's been the the champ, 
overall. Like he defended, I think, five times in a row. He's been champ a few times on and off. He's probably like a fucking 11-time champion by now. Is he local or is he kind of yeah. tour and do this stuff? Or yeah, so like... he's Jason Rouse's opener. Jason Rouse, if you're not familiar, is like kind of Canada's dirtiest export, triple X kind of guy. He's he's known internationally. So he chose Sam to open with him in the Europe tour recently for a month out there. They're going to Mexico soon. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, Sam's starting to find his uh, – his way out of the microscope or whatever you want to is is the goal really cuz when you said earlier that you're working on getting your american visa is the goal really to like what is the goal nowadays with with comedians cuz i know in the in the early 90s every comedian wanted to get a tv show then every comedy yeah. or comedian wanted an hbo special now netflix hands them out left right and center to lots of great comedians what what is what's what's the goal with with comedy nowadays? I like you kind of, you kind of save that out of niceness to me. Like they're all great, lots of great comedians, but you <laughs> truly mean like not all of them are great. Let's be honest. Okay, well, not I, I'm not saving that for yeah. you. I'm just I know it's just if there's still lots of good ones. That's a common thing now in societies. We say, oh, Netflix now has done too much. You know, it's whack. <laughs> it's like it became too popular, and now people shit on it. Kind, I don't kind of like Dane Cook. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> kind of. There's a lot there, but I think for people who enjoy comedy, it's not too much. Because if you can't go to a comedy... Right. You know, if my wife, we went to... When we were in Los Angeles, we went to a comedy... Uh, went to a comedy store, the... Was it the comedy... No, not the comedy cave. That's in Calgary. Mm-hmm. It was a black comedy club. And yeah, it was the comedy f- store. Fucking... No, it wasn't the comedy store. A black com Like the people... Yeah. Yeah, it oh. was, and it was, it was all black, com- no, and it was all black comedians. Was it on the same road, like Sunset? I think so. Yeah, so it would have been the Laugh Factory. You might have gone on a Sunday night, like Chocolate Sundays or whatever it's no. called. No, uh, fuck, I wish I could remember the name of it, but what I'm getting right. at is there was such an eclectic group of of people. Cool. Yeah, it was, I don't know that that well, was even the fucking An all black point. show is the pinnacle. When you ask, like, to get back to your question, what's the dream in comedy? Yeah. What's the goal? Those rooms for me. Yeah. Um, not just like a, a black audience, but that would be nice because they are actually the best laughers. And yeah. you feel the best. <clears throat> and look, we're three white guys in a room right now. Yeah. yeah. And we all enjoy making a black guy laugh more than a fellow white guy. It's a good time. That's a true story. I'm not going to lie. Right? I'll, yeah. I can agree I've never laughed harder than with a room full of black guys and black people just in general. wonderful experience. Fucking great time. Um, like seeing a home game. For the Raptors or something like you're just all of a sudden in a environment with more energy, different cultures. It's, yeah, it's a, yeah, a different laugh. feel. Like the energy levels higher. It's yeah, they'll move around. I remember in Toronto, fucking bike to this gig. Like barely got there. Completely underestimated it on the map. Like a 35 minute sweaty bike, and oh, then geez. have to like walk right on stage. But <laughs> uh, one joke landed with this black guy in the front in an aisle seat. And he just like leaned forward and went, ah, and just clapped and like started walking up the aisle, like leaving, <laughs> like hands on each chair up the aisle as he's going, like to hold himself up. <laughs> and he got to the back of the room, the wall, <laughs> the door frame, and he put his hand up on the door frame and then like collected himself and came back and sat down. And it felt like getting like Jeez. a triple off the wall. Like I almost got him out of the fucking establishment. I almost walked <laughs> him out of the building. But he hung up on the wall, but I still fucking scurried to third. And I'm happy. I was happy with it. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so that's the goal. I, I don't know. Just good rooms. Um, you can get caught up thinking about what you are and aren't getting like uh, milestone-wise or whatever. Society is painted as, as milestone um, size, like just for laughs or Sirius XM in Canada or uh, the comedy channel, a Netflix special, these kind of hurdles, these bars. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so many lanes you can take. Internet's kind of opened all that up too. I guess, I guess the main reason I ask is because I'm, I'm not in the world of comedy Outside mm-hmm. of the basic things, outside that, of your that, wife going one mentioned. for one, your wife going one yes. for one on an open mic and getting a laugh, apparently an uproarious laugh. Yes, that's apparently how it went. So what are you talking about? You're heavily allegedly. plugged in. You're with Sarah Silverman, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't go that far. Um, but no, I'm like I'm, I'm just not in the comedy world, so I'm, it's more out of intrigue 
than comparison, I guess you you could say. Okay. Like, I don't know what it what a comedian's goal is these days with their comedy. Is it just to be fucking funny and enjoy what you're doing? Because yeah. that's honestly whoever's doing that, I'm yeah. I'm jealous of because that's the best time in the Play world. Play bigger and bigger rooms, sell out shows. Um, for me, you get to a point where it's less of editing videos and doing admin work and booking all shows. Um, you'll always be in control of your your calendar. I mean, oh. That's a misunderstanding in comedy that you just get a manager and he books everything for you. That's crazy. So seems but, like a dangerous way to go about things. Uh, it's not their player like that's like having a character on that mario kart game you made me play <laughs> and just like <laughs> leaving it here and be like hey you're gonna be my manager like can you just play that character and get its stats up and the guy's gonna be like yeah yeah sure and you're gonna leave he's gonna play as his character oh, because yeah. he's him inside his body and he matters not you so if you matter, you'll go, you'll reach, you'll email, you'll call, you'll text, you'll set up your schedule. Ah, you know, it'd be better if I did this weekend than this weekend because of that, because I know my life because I'm in it. Right. Yeah. So there's no way you can ever, I mean, the guys that are really high up, um, there's no real conversation. It's just offers that come in and he just goes, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Fair enough. So, uh, but there you go. There's a, a goal is to try to get away from the admin side of things. And just focus more on writing. Because even right now, man, I'm in like a, a funk, as you would call it, for writing. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, you say it like uh, someone died in yeah. my family. Ouch. Oh, jeez. Well, I'm, that's, I'm sorry to hear about that. That's your life. You haven't that's, thought of anything new that's funny. <laughs> yeah, but like that's your I career. I bad for you. <laughs> I do. It'd be like me not being able to like... Be like breaking both my hands and not being able to go to work. I'd be like, well, you feel bad for the guy who broke both right. his hands can't go to work, right? Right. I was going I was going to ask what what style of writer are you? Are you in, in the moment? Because you said you enjoy people watching, which I'm um, a massive fan of. Do you kind of like write notes on your phone as you go throughout the <sighs> day? I do have notes on the phone. Or is this a sit down at the end of the day and like, okay, let's fucking write some jokes? I'm still trying to find my writing style, I think. Okay. Uh, it's uh, It's a constant struggle. But for me, mainly, it's about making people... Uh, laugh like in a real life situation. Like for example, I told that marble story fairly well. It was with some amazing. new with some new beats, kind of like I've told it before. But then there's like I worked a couple. No, that's not something I tell on stage. I'm not saying it's a bit or anything. No, no, like no. That. But but uh, the art of storytelling. Yeah, right? yeah. There's way there's little choices I made along the way that to me could translate on stage. And I go, oh, I wonder if that'll make more than two people in the basement laugh. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Or was it too in the moment, too reactionary, which is I find what a lot of my stuff is. It's like just in the moment reaction. Uh, you could call it crowd work, but I'm not a prolific crowd work comic. I'm not amazing at it. I'm better than a lot. But um, it's kind of like freestyle. I, I, and I'm only better than a lot because I choose to do it. Okay. There's a lot of comics that are scared of it, that don't want to do it, that refrain from it. There's also a belief that crowd work comics aren't good. That's not material. Stick to your material. Okay. No one, like, oh, this guy is just going to go up and talk to the crowd, be a hack. You know, there's. Brody like... Stevens was one of the best crowd work people ever. Yeah, man. Like, and he was fucking um, hilarious. So Steve Byrne was on the lineup with me when I had to follow uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. And so I'm watching, I got two hours. I'm watching the show. I get the back of the audience, back <laughs> of the room. Yeah. Which is a place you have to like, holy fuck, you got to sit down and be quiet and don't get in the way of anyone or you'll be asked to leave. And because you got to imagine there's thousands of comics and amateur comics in L.A. Right. And they can't all just be hanging out at the store. There's got to be a bar set. Right. Like, yeah. who the fuck are you? And it took so many times of me going in there. Like, oh, I'm from out of town. I'm a comic from Canada. And like, yeah, we see so many comics. We, you don't stand out. Sorry, pal. Ooh. Like, you don't get a free pass. And that's understandable. And I kind of like, and I'm okay with that. But there's a lot of comics that will complain about that. And that's good because then they won't get past that hurdle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. Yeah. If you're the one complaining, yeah. you're probably not going to Oh, yeah. Past. You know what? You probably shouldn't reach out. He probably does hate you, dude. Yeah. He probably does. Yeah. He probably hates you. He probably thinks of you specifically every night and definitely remembers you. Put your picture in his mind. You'll never be on again. So, um, so anyways, Steve Byrne was on that show. And for crowd work, 
you know, he has a 15 minute spot. He drove in from wherever to work on new material. This is his place to do that in LA, but the show was slow. The show was real slow. Wasn't, wasn't popping. And, uh, he came out and he knew what would awake them up. Let's talk to them directly. Let's in, let's involve them then. Mm -hmm. And like, he was a, he did an awesome job. And, uh, there was like an Asian guy, any Asian people in the audience. And there's like a couple claps. And he like looks at a guy like, uh, Chinese. And the guy's like, no, Korean. And I, uh, it just proved the point that he's like, see, even like Asians don't know. Uh, other Asians, like even we're wrong about it. It's not just white people, <laughs> right, sir? Like, do you think you could get it, right? And the guy was like, I think I could get it. Like, he disagreed. He went, really? Okay. And he looked over, and there was one Asian woman sitting up against the wall. He goes, you, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this great moment where, like, Steve's on stage talking to the only two Asian people in the room and telling one to stand up, and he goes, what is she? To the other one. <laughs> What is she? He's like, gun to his head. And he's like, oh, Vietnamese? And she's like, no, it's like Japanese. Like, oh, fuck. And the crowd explodes. Like, see, you fucking asshole. And then he just continued for 15 along that path and, and doing great shit. And it woke it up. And it and he got into his Tesla and he drove home. Tesla. And then meanwhile, the show continued on better than before. And uh, so oh, probably, like he woke him. He knew what it took. Made my job easier for sure near the end. It would have been even more lethargic. That's awesome though. It's like you see him do that and like crowd works dope. Yeah. Um until so you're the guy being. And sometimes made fun it's of. not like worth it. You try and you don't get anything out of it, you know? And sometimes you just you're an asshole. Like you take some risks and you say some mean things. You gotta just kinda own it. You kinda have a loaded gun in your hand when you have a microphone, you have some power. I mean, there's been times where I've had kind of altercations i've had a whiskey glass thrown at me what on stage and then i had a guy who wanted to beat me up after a fort mcmurray show uh, that would Classic. be where it happens so, so your mouth does get you into trouble in those gross situations that, but isn't that like a badge of honor kind of like yeah man it's a good story yeah uh, I'm, I'm excited that it's a part of my come up but also excited to know it won't be a part of my future like, <laughs> i don't need to work those rooms that's, right that's very quickly right kind of i think worked them one or two cycles of like going on the road, driving seven hours and doing it. Grand then, Prairie, Fort McMurray. Yeah, two or three, two or three cycles of Grand Prairie, two or three of Fort Mac, and it's like not worth the five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that's too tough. Sounds like going to site, right? So it's too much. Do you do you think that some of these heckler videos that are that are on Facebook and stuff? Do you think that these are kind of getting too much? Everything's too much, man. There's too much everything. Well, I just see it like, and the reason I ask is at first it was like the odd video would come out where someone would have a hack. Yo, yeah, we're all trying to chase those clicks. Okay. And that's one of those titles that we've seen taken off. Yeah. So what is that like in your industry? I've thought about it. I've yeah. sat there thinking, you know, with the edit program open going, man, so at the top, what do I got to do? White bold lettering. Right? Yeah. Black bar, bottom, I got to have white lettering. Brett Forte versus Heckler uh, Destroys bitch. comedian. Yeah. Actually, I do have one. I must have one on YouTube or something. And it's actually shameless. And I'm glad you guys are bringing this up because, <laughs> so my good friend Todd Ness, very funny comedian in Calgary. And, I, you know, like if you want to do a rank job, like he's at the top of his class. Well, it's, we kind of rank people when they come yeah. in here. Oh, so. you love it. You <laughs> yeah. love the rank job. We got two leaderboards. You guys right? want to do a quick shout out to my time, my compete? Hell yeah. Yeah, it was, it was competitive. What was it? It was 30. 30, 43. 30, 43, which puts him. That Kate, is, sorry. Uh, or not sorry. Oh, Yeah, Kate, sorry. Uh, he took you down. Um, that was our last guest. Connor Knight from uh, Next Level. Oh, be Connor. The that next is... level. Yeah, next level Haley. on the 17th. Great spot. I know. Chris LaBelle does their, he's a comedian, he does their advertising. Nice. Oh, or wicked. advertises for them, doesn't run their advertising. Hmm. Radio it's such voice? A, it's such a small community. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha, comedian Brett Forte, and then in capitals, roasts audience. <laughs> I put that is. together. <laughs> I put that title up. Uh, it's not like... Uh, on the video itself. It's just what the YouTube video is called. Yeah, it's, you got to get that clear. And like, so it's a minute 44, and I actually don't remember what I said in it. It was uploaded a year ago. But maybe, maybe you know it... what? Let's see if I truly roasted them. Hell yeah. Let's see what this is here. Okay. 
pull it around the other side. Oh yeah. Okay. Un momento. I just uh... come on, Siri. <laughs> Nothing so far. That's always good when you <laughs> go after the stag table. You guys all have writing on your t shirts and they all have to be read out loud. Okay, one second. I'm so good, your mom cheers for me. That's, that's so unfortunate for that guy. The only thing your mom cheers is her ninth mimosa before she blows the neighbor. Ooh, okay. <laughs> No, that's yeah. a roast. <laughs> that's a solid. That's a solid. Oh, okay. So I remember that moment. All right, let's give you some insight to that. I, dude, that that's, guy did you're not, killing, by the way. In that's that an audience, act job. Like, that's an act job. So I saw that guy's shirt as he was sitting down, and I thought about that joke in the wings. Now I'm remembering that moment. Okay. So uh, that was a total act job of me, like, oh, hold on, you got something written on your shirt here, like discovering it. Playing the act. Ah, yeah. nice. Liar. Marbles. It's a marble scam Dude. job on the audience every night. I say, look, I got luster. I got no luster. You know what? But that's perfect. That's what you got to do. That is. Marbles is going to be my new hustle. That'll be. Anytime I think of a hustle, it's going to just come back to the marbles. No, one's ever, no one ever is going to pull that off again. I, uh, and you know another one? Such would, a perfect. I would take cards from people like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon and stuff yeah, at school. yeah. yeah. So I guess this kind of breaks my rule of stealing from people uh, personally. So this is kind of like my one-off. But uh, You're a kid. Yeah, you know what? Kids do dumb shit. Yeah, and it's kid-kid, you know? Like it's that's a elementary. Real, yeah, that's a real kid. We're all like not even on the radar yet. Like we're yeah, off no. the system. No. Yeah, do whatever you want. No one's monitoring that. I no. once gave a kid a backbreaker in elementary, so I know we're off the oh, radar shit. at that age. Do you we're remember Jazzy Jewelry? Huh? No. Jazzy jewelry. No. Something my sister had. It was it was jewelry, but they came with these little gold rings that connected everything together. Okay. I took all the rings and sold them as fake earrings to all the girls in school. Grade, there it is. Grade four, <laughs> selling grade six girls these earrings for like a buck a piece, and then I finally got busted. And the fucking I had to like yeah. my my parents were like, "How much did yeah. you make?" And I just pull all this change. <laughs> <laughs> They're like. Okay, whatever. Stop doing this. Like, <laughs> like they were having no more of the uh, the jazzy jewelry. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Great. What kind of profit you think? Let's be realistic. Oh, like honestly, for just a handful out of my sister's little thing, probably yeah. like ten bucks. Oh yeah, like and that's that's, that's over power? like that's over like four days or whatever. Was what that five power rates of the vending machine? Yeah, two bucks a piece. Uh, easy. That's worth okay, some so, red lips. Whoa, grade four. Not two bucks a piece. Oh, no. Uh, and we didn't have vending machines for some reasons, but we had the Domo right up by us. Cheaper than $2, right? Is what you're oh, going to say? Way cheaper. Buck 10. Yeah, yeah. Buck, Buck 10, 10 was a... If, was it a, was a dollar. Everything in the vending machine was a dollar. Even for like a big, juicy 591 milliliter power rate? It was... Oh, a, no. That would be like a buck 25. Yeah, buck 25. But a 600 but mil, buck 10. Pop. Not, not can, power can rate. Can of Coke, 600 buck. mil. You know, like the the bottles? Uh, the like, bottles? The bottles. Not the liter bottles, but like the mid oh, bottles. Oh, okay. That's a six ninety one, pal. Si- okay, six ninety one. No, you're milliliter. So we round way no, you're down. Mil- yeah. We round way down. Don't be doing no round jobs here, okay? You see that score on the back? What did you write down? 30.43. You went to the second decimal place. I expect the same All right. with prices. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> buck 10. Buck 10. Yeah. Cho- chocolate bar was a buck. That's a nice scan, man. That's yeah, a it, nice was, scam. it was good. It worked until I don't know what happened, but. Fucking My wife's biggest scam. She used to steal her dad's smokes and sell them for an, a buck <laughs> a piece. A legit scam, right there. See, you guys are going dollar, dollar, dollar. Yeah. Well, see, here's seven hundred. We dollar didn't have rich. Store. We didn't. We didn't have that rich. Um, seg- like in our school, it was all just not rich people. So there was, was no like it was middle class and poor. Pretty much, there was no dude who. There was no twelve then, year olds with a thousand bucks in their pocket. Yeah, but that's the only. Who? I guess the only. Fuck, my scam wasn't even good. I once traded a guy a Sandy McCarthy rookie card mm-hmm. 
for a Steve Eisenman rookie card. Well, I don't know who the first player is, so that's how good it is. He was a Native American hockey player who played for Calgary, and our school was the designated school for the local reserve around here. Yeah. So What's his name? Sandy McCarthy. He was a hell of a fucking fighter. Couldn't skate backwards to save oh, his you goddamn said, life. Oh, you said Native. I know. Yeah. yeah. Native Canadian. Native <laughs> I know he's a good fighter. Yeah. But, man. True story. Can't he was uh, he was a great <laughs> hockey player. His 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 uh, his skating and shit improved as he was in the NHL, but he wasn't the greatest. But to trade for Steve Eisenman, <laughs> that's what you want to hear for a review on a player. Like, oh, his skating improved. <laughs> yeah, it should have improved before he was in the fucking NHL. But how's Brett as a comment? Well, as a comment, well, his confidence is improving. <laughs> Some pre skis, you know, he's getting more comfortable up there. Oh yeah. What, when's he playing here? I'll make sure not to see him. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, when can we find you and where for no people? Way. None, nowhere. Of your, none of your business. None of your fucking none business. Ya. Just shut the fuck up. I hope you're not wrapping up the cast because I'm, I'm, I'm a good time no, with you guys. Hell no. no, I just wanted to know because we haven't even we haven't even asked. Like You do Yuck Yucks often. Yeah, it's kind of my home battles. base. I'll play all the clubs in the city, Comedy Cave, Laugh Shop, and Yuck Yucks. You know? It's good just to not always be on the road. The big three. Uh, don't mind playing in my own city but then you get into these writing funks and you start like getting in your head like ah, i can't be giving this city these same jokes over and over again uh, it kind of lifts some weight off you when you go to ottawa and tell some jokes because it's like ah, i can tell you one from four years ago <laughs> no. from the very first joke i wrote four years ago and it's fresh to you guys and it's a celebration but in calgary it's like how many of these people have seen me before and seen this joke three times do you get like a lot of repeat like do I notice? don't know. I don't know. You Hard can't do the tally yeah, at the I end. Say, yeah. You don't know. Hey, were you here? Were you here? Yes. The were most you, you can do at, at what I do at the beginning of roast battles is I go like, it's a typical host question of just uh, an excuse to get applauses. The kind of the rule when you're hosting a show is get the audience to applaud a bunch at the beginning. Like get them in the mood to psychologically get them into it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so it's usually like, how you doing tonight? Yeah, okay. Uh, who here's been to Yuck Yucks before? Make some noise. All right, who here for the first time? Make some noise. Anyone celebrating anything tonight? Uh, so you're your headliner is this. Let's give it up for him early. We got a middle act, you know, like, bang, hit him with uh, some direction. Not too much, you know? And uh, so I asked that question at the beginning of Roast Battles, and it seems to me like 30% of the audience is a repeat Okay. And then 70% new each time. So it's been full for, feels like uh, maybe eight shows in a row now. Like it's finally caught its stride. That's awesome. Yeah. There was times in the beginning, you know, like getting people out. It's not even a proven material yet. It's not a proven product. So of course, like people aren't going to pay $20 to come out. So you'd have to give free tickets. Yeah. Yeah. And it's called papering a room in the industry. Okay. You paper a room. Give and, the tickets, which means yeah, you just give the tickets out, yeah. get them in there, and then they can you can make your money on booze, which chances are you're not getting a cut of. Like you're just making money for the club because that's kind of a different side hustle, right? If you yeah. want in on the booze side, yeah, of different things, agreement. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you can work on the door. You can get a hundred percent of the tickets that come in at the door, and then none of the booze and no payment. You can get payment and the door. You can work out all sorts of things. Okay. Is that all up to the comic and kind of their, their yeah their history or what and the their club record? is comfortable doing? Okay. Yeah. How how's the scene in Calgary? Are we rather fair? Is there? Oh, we have three clubs. We're, we have three, so it's not a lot of cities even have three. So, really? Yeah, we definitely have a good playground a good arena to train our uh, soldiers in. There's no no excuses. You can't get up as many times per week as New York or L.A. Those stories are so glorified on podcasts. And when I got into comedy, like, how many times I heard someone talk about, oh, well, in New York in 95, you could do 11 spots in a night. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it was great. You could hop from the cellar to this and that, and you think it's just like pack show after pack show, and you're rocking a fucking red carpet between each gig. But no, like when you go to New York and L.A. now, okay, I cannot speak for those times. Fair. Yeah. But there are a lot of shit rooms, a lot of shit <laughs> mics, and like a shit dive bar exists in New York and L.A. It's a coffee and more shop of them. with 30 people. Yeah, They're the same things, just more of them. And it's what you have to do to come up. You got to produce your own show. It seems like that's, well, you don't have to, but that's a path people take. Mm-hmm. I did it with a uh, 
coffee shop show, Phil and Sebastian, here in Calgary. Nice. On Sunday nights at 7 p.m. while it was still bright out. Yeah. No blinds on the window. Bright as a fucking Walmart. <laughs> you got to do, and you got to do jokes for people that go to Phil and Sebastian's coffee shop. Do you tailor That's how they your heard act about to the it? show. Do you tailor your act to when you do no, something no, like no, that? No, 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 no. Just go no, you. No. And... We went dark. Yeah. And it got weird. <laughs> it got weird. I can only now, imagine sipping a fucking latte in here and. Oh, yeah. Oh, we sold uh, spirits. We did sell <laughs> we did sell spirits, wine and spirits. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, it wasn't like a roast battle show. It was just a normal show with like three ten minute spots and then a headliner and and then one night uh, the headliner uh, did a joke and the joke was to the effect of he slept with a woman ten years ago. Ten years later they meet up. They uh, go for golf. They're golfing and she's like, I have something I need to get off my chest and tell you. And he's like, oh, my God, what is it? She's like, um, I was born a man, and I converted to a woman. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, you've been hitting from the women's tee all day. <laughs> right? That's the turn in the joke. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's not offensive <laughs> at all. No, I thought it that happens was going. to include a sex change in the story. <laughs> but because those words were said, people shut off. They don't even hear you. They don't even listen to you. Really? And oh one of God. the employees happened to be a uh, transgender. Okay? Now, I, I I don't know, a girl. She looked very feminine. And uh, I remember watching during his set uh, her behind the counter. And I saw the pain on her face, like, Ooh. during his whole set. And she's, like, in discomfort. Like, she had fucking diarrhea. Like, the facial expressions she was making. So, and, and I'm all about getting the story, man. Like, yeah. let's, I got to find out why I perceived this on this person's face. I, I got to know what's going on. So I do a little fishing and I'm sitting like, I'm taking down the lights after I'm like, Hey, you had a good time tonight. And she goes, Nope. <laughs> uh, <this is> just, <laughs> no. And I go, yes. <laughs> Suspicions were correct. <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> uh, no, like, uh, and I, you know, I made a joke to like, Bring myself on her side. I was like, what did uh, Andrew say the word uh, retard too many times tonight? He has this retard bit, which is also good, which talks about <laughs> the literal definition of retardation, like slowing things down. Anyways. Look it up if you don't know. Right. Don't be offended. Again, not an offensive joke. No. Just Andrew Albert is his name, by the way, if you want to look into his comedy. He's very funny. He lives sure. in Montreal now. Andrew Albert. And uh, he's probably killing over there. Yeah, he's a great dude. Um so he uh, he says that, and and I go, you had a good time tonight? Nope. I go, oh, did he say the word retard too many t- times tonight? And she goes, yeah, jokes like that um, or ones about uh, transgender issues I'm not into because I'm transgender. Now, was she obviously transgender when you looked at her? No, man. I just nope. thought it was like a just a girl with like uh, shaved blonde hair, like just a short haircut. Cool. Like a girl, right? Yeah. And it, 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 she is. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I just asked. No, no, I, but it doesn't matter that she's transgender yeah, at all. Actually. Yeah, no, I get you. It doesn't. And she's telling me it does. She actually, I'm not paraphrasing. She says, I'm not into transgender jokes because I'm transgender. So I kind of repeated what Bill Burr has said about like, um, everything's a joke until uh, it's something that is in your life. And then now it's a statement becomes a statement instead of a joke everything else was in jest light ah catholics i'm not catholic that's funny oh god oh the priests i know right ha 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 and then do like, you find a some... vegan joke it's like well i don't eat meat what is he saying am i lethargic what the fuck like i'm not <laughs> it's a statement oh i'm less of a person oh it's like yeah jews they suck burn them but i'm a, what you know like i get you yeah it's... whoa we're just drawing the line out of nowhere. So she literally said that word for word. And I, you know, I took the opportunity to, uh, like, share my two cents. <laughs> and I remember telling Todd Ness about this, comedian in Calgary. just mentioned him a second ago. And uh, and he's like, yeah, right. You could have just went, oh, it's, I'm sorry to hear that. Like, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to have a podcast with her, you know? And that's right. I was like, well, and I gave her the Bill Burr bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's funny because you're only offended because it has to do with you. That's interesting. It's highly selective of you. <laughs> and uh, she didn't agree. She didn't care for the things I had to say. And she emailed uh, Phil 
<laughs> from Phil and Sebastian. God damn. <laughs> like the like Tony the, Starbucks. The Phil. Like top <laughs> the, of the heap. Yeah, yeah. Hey Tony. <laughs> uh blah blah blah. Not into it. Don't know what that message said. All I know is the one I receive from Phil saying, uh, your show doesn't match. Uh, our themes and motifs. He started using like artistic words in the email. Oh, for Christ. The really? motifs and mission statements here at Phil and Sebastian don't quite mesh coherently when with you your can facade. Hear a snotty accent in an email. Yeah. It's like we, go fuck yourself. We just got oh. politely rejected in a in a uh, very like you don't fit our brand type of brand. Big yeah. word. They Everyone's call, branding. Well, don't they, say who it is. Well, uh, I'm not going to say. So who you it said is, you want to be here. Say, so get another called, drink. Do you want? I would love a drink. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, what do you want? Whatever. Whatever. They called themselves boring. Who did? The the people that we wanted to have on our show. We invited them onto our show. We've been rejected a couple times recently, a couple, uh, and it's been. And they of, they said they were boring. Yeah, they they said we we've listened to a couple of your recent shows and we feel that we would be too boring oh, overthinking. We it. we would be too boring. Actually, I respect as that. a guest for your show. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> you think your product is too boring to promote? Which was odd. Crazy. So I said that to Jesse, and Jesse was like, so we were politely rejected that we don't fit their brand. I'm like, oh, I see it now. It seemed, it was rather intriguing. Okay, yeah, they're, yeah, it is a cop-out. Kind of. But I wish it was just for face value. Like They're like, hey, we don't think we would be good enough. But thank you. More yeah. people should pause before hitting that Instagram live button and think I about agree. it. I've never gone live. No? Nah, virgin. It took me... S- Can't do it. My Can't. personal account, I never have. Yeah. On my personal account, I've only done it for the Ruckus account. There was a while where I went hard. We were doing some bike rides and just kind of did... Riding around with the fans, yeah. showing them Calgary and doing that kind of shit. But it was, but I agree with you. I'm not a TV channel yet, dude. And no. but compared to what is out there, uh, yeah, like I'm way better at content than yes. most people I by would agree. that standard. But I still try to hold myself to a higher one of Thank like you. considering people's time. Thank like you. you'd rather watch a 45 second video of me dancing lately that's what i've been doing little dance videos because i can move goofy nice uh you'd rather watch that than me like i don't know maybe i'm speaking out of turn because like i see what people watch on youtube just long drawn out nothing just my day what do we got here water beer water water thanks buddy yeah nice there's i follow a girl on instagram and i've had to stop like I tend to skip her stories, and I've only been watching more and more recently because I've been promoted to stay-at-home dad, so I've had a little bit of extra time okay. for the old Instagram. To look at women on Instagram? I wouldn't say women, but just I'm a stay-at-home dad Instagram. now, so I look at a lot of women on Instagram. Yeah, it's that, my thing. It's that what came we out do. fucked up for sure. But there's this, the one, one. <laughs> there's this one account I followed, and she it started out as like a hot chick account. Then it turns out that she has this family. So her story, oh, even creepier. <laughs> well, her her stories go from, and here's I don't my just kids, mean family. And here's but my kids. Her it's stories like, no. go from like her posting, and she's like Hawaiian or in this beautiful beach, okay. yeah, yeah, stricken place where all she does is on a fucking beach all the time and eating fruit. Mm-hmm. Her name's all Al- of a sudden, her name's Allison. I all of a sudden, <laughs> this kid shows up, and it's like pictures of her kid and. Her and her kid walking on the beach in a thong bikini, and I'm like, well, what the? Not her kid's not in a thong bikini. Yeah, yeah, you missed the season. Yeah, so I'm just like, this is too weird. What is your kid gonna think when he hits elementary and is like, oh yeah, hey, yeah. I saw your mom on Instagram. Great butt. Yeah, the reason I'm it's like, accessible. What the fuck? That sucks for bullying. My mom was a stripper in the '80s. I'm proud of it, and luckily it was back then, and there wasn't a lot of, I guess, internet links or anything like that, or published. You know, I also so. feel like it was more acceptable in the '80s for some reason. Absolutely, you're right like, about it, that. It was like it was like being a professional athlete. It was, I don't know. Cardi B now has made it a thing. She used to rape. Don't say it. That's she used to drug and rape people, to the Cody, community of strippers. It's true, right, dude? You think so? Are, are strippers pissed at Cardi B? Well, no, Cardi B used it as a she's platform them, to... She's given strippers this new bullshit to call it a hustle. Make it an Instagram account where you get to 
hold up creams and diet lollipops or whatever (laughs) the fuck it is. Yeah. And say that you're, you've got this new, like we were talking before, this hustle that seems to be shaped. Yeah. Well, everyone needs to use Instagram for their business or their job now. Unfortunately, it's our bread and butter. That's like, we have like, we have like 800 followers on Twitter, like 200 on Facebook and like 6,000 on Instagram. Yeah. It's like. That's that's kind of where it is. Yeah. And I think Snap, unfortunately, and I, we're not going down this road, but I think Snapchat's going to be the new, the new? new thing. It's been around for a minute. I've no, never no, but, been on no, Snapchat. Everything's been around been for Twitter. a minute, though, but things, they just did a recent poll. Most millennials and Gen X are getting their news from Snapchat. News? News from Snapchat. Whoa, that's well, No, but where are you getting this news from? Uh, YouTube? The, the internet. <laughs> It was Philip DeFranco. Fuck off. Hey, okay, no, you know, a, he seems he, reputable. He's yeah. a solid. Uh, he, I like how he's very Now that I just ground. threw that out, someone fact-checked me. I'm pretty sure that's where I heard it. But yes. Whatever. They're they're getting their new. Um, it was Philip. It was Franco. Because, yeah, that's what it was. Philip DeFranco wants to do Snapchat now because people are getting their news from Snapchat. You, so he's, he's like. Sorry, go on. So he's like, I got to. I feel like you have he's got to He's evolving. He's, he's trying to evolve. So he can put the goodness. Of his sort um, into there. His we're going to stop at Neanderthal on this podcast and not <laughs> evolve into that. <laughs> he, uh, uh, years ago, I used to watch him. I haven't for years, but I know he was one of the first guys on YouTube, maybe, um, who popped off. And I think he was one of the pioneers of this editing technique that you see on YouTube. No breaths. No breaths. What the fuck? It or to work, to work, to work, to work, to it's, work. It's pleasing. I said something. That I didn't realize what? what he was doing. I don't like it. I. I, I never noticed it until it was pointed out to me, but my ADD and my attention span. I know. And are you it, embarrassed about that? It, I am. I am because yeah. of what it has become. I don't shy away from people who edit videos otherwise, but his form of video, I have become a daily watcher where yeah. on weekends, I'm subscribed. On, on weekends, I'm like, Oh man, I'm missing my Philip DeFranco, and it's become something that I really enjoy. Yeah, I believe it is the editing style that I do enjoy because it is the visual point of it. Though it just keeps it going, right? It it keeps you a hundred percent engaged. It makes where... me sick. Really, the cuts. There's so many yeah, cuts man. of him just like if you it's a stampede ride. If you're kind of looking off to the side, it's just like do 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 and. It makes me sick, but if you just kind of like zone out, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that. Put your breaths in. Be normal. Don't don't just cut, well, cut, cut. It's cut, like cut. A, a steroid. It'll help people that aren't as uh, engaging or captivating uh, become more captivating. Because I think Philip DeFranco would be a little less quotable and reliable uh, if you heard in between his facts about Syria, him going and um, so. Uh, Syria, you know, did He'd this. be like Crowder. That moment of me like, ah, uh, just thinking what the next thing is, yeah. you know, if those edits weren't there, immediately Put, kind of takes it away. And it puts it puts doubt in it too, right? Yeah. You know what's funny? So you said you listened to him a long time ago or a couple yeah, years ago or yeah, whatever. probably like five, six years ago or something. Apparently he's changed a lot. So I only came into him in the last two years. Um, but apparently like he's evolved like, like five times, he said. Like he said he went he from routinely... really stupid views to like... Yeah, he extreme, routinely apologizes not extreme, but. for he's like, look, because you know when whenever I'm not interested, well, as, <laughs> as, don't as, hear someone apologize, right? As a comedian nowadays, everyone has had shit pulled up from the past, and like, yeah, yeah. this comedian just deleted ten thousand tweets yeah. from two thousand and eight, yeah. right? He is. He goes, I'm not deleting any old videos. I'm not deleting any old tweets. I said some stupid, fucked up shit. I used to do it for shock. I used to do it for clicks. It's not me anymore. That's It's still going to be out there. Yeah. Because fuck you. It was me. Yeah. But it's not. So he routinely does it, but he's changed, apparently. Pardon me. Not sure there. Yeah, cause I, I haven't looked at his older stuff, so I can't really compare. He's just well, kind of a vanilla news thing. He's very uh, emotionally tied in. And, yeah, uh, he seems more so. vanilla now, though. Yeah. Okay. Like, he has his, he has his like, whoa, this is fucking stupid. That's because all but his it's... videos kept getting demonetized. Uh... You notice now that he has commercials almost every video lately? 
it's because he's getting monetized. When he was saying whatever the fuck he wanted, he was getting his videos routinely. Oh, yeah. So do you run into that at all, like censorship uh-huh, in a way at, that? Oh, well, for YouTube, I'm not at that level yet. I'm actually, but even just in uh, in career, like, is do they like, hey, we'd like to have you on? Oh, on oh I'm actually just compiling. Um, uh, a bunch of proper videos and edited of roast battle footage. Uh, so, so to have uh, a proper release uh, structure. So when I start a channel, it's actually proper. Cool, man. I realized so you, you kind of have to play by the rules and uh, do it properly. So yeah, uh, good footage. Um, I always, I, it seems content-wise, especially on Instagram, anytime I put up a clip of a roast battle or a really dope joke by whoever, uh, it always gets like far less engagement than anything else, it seems. So but they, I know, they bury it, Well, definitely, I don't know algorithm. if it's them burying it or people just, like, I guess, feel less comfortable uh, engaging with maybe something that's dirty or slamming, you know? Like, okay. they're not going to maybe leave their crying emojis on something about a guy with a fake leg, you know, him being a gimp, you know? <laughs> yes. But they're they're like, laugh they'll laugh at, at the it. dog meme. They'll laugh yeah. at it, but they'll... Scroll by it. Yeah. They're not going to So that's share good. Like, I, I want you. that, but it's just, it hurts the reach, man. Mm-hmm. So even so, the other day, I, like, shamelessly, like, you want to talk about getting back to that, like, comedian slams heckler. And Todd Ness, the point I was going to make is he, like, he's been trying that recently. Like, his uh, attempt is he's taking videos and memeing them, like, putting the letters, uh, comedian versus heckler, uh, this. Because another guy in Calgary recently reached 2 million views on one of those videos on YouTube. Really? Right? They hit. So, it's just, like, it's shameless to... It's all about the thumbnail... Put together, who knows? Yeah. We're all trying to find out what yeah. does the internet want. <laughs> Fuck. And uh, changes. Daily. I'm always, you know, I don't know. I'm growing. I'm at like four and a half thousand. I do. I kind of stick to thematic bits, like uh, st- people on the street getting to the story, getting like recording them secretly, getting good audio and video of like weird people that otherwise you walk by. And you know there's a story there, but everyone's too shy to get it. Actually tell you. AKA too shy to comment on the roast video too. Too shy mm. to do a lot of things, mm, right? Yeah. That's a theme in society. A lot of people don't have the confrontation. Well the new the new age yeah. is don't you. make waves. The new the new age is don't make waves and I'm right. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, change the name of your Wi Fi password <laughs> to send a message to your neighbor. That's the latest I've seen. Hey four B, shut your dog up. Five G Wi Fi. You know, mine is CSIS mobile unit, and it scares the shit out of me. That's yeah. hilarious. That was my fucking neighbor. CSIS. So he tells me his. How he, many people know what CSIS is? Though, true. Man. I should go FBI, but FBI is not in Canada, right? right? And then they would know. Yeah. But so if, if you go CSIS mobile unit, it fucked with me. My neighbor, who my my old neighbor, who's not with us, great great family, Mormon family. Yeah. So so s- straight as the equator. Did they die? It's kind of round, but anyways, you get what I'm going for. They no, they moved. They did not die. Um, he had his Wi-Fi set as CISO, CSIS mobile unit, and it would only pop up at my house every so often. Like I wouldn't see it regularly. Yeah. Amongst the Wi-Fi to choose now, because it's my home network, it's not like you're consistently picking your network. You don't always go and look. Right? No, right? So. It, it's coming up and going. It's coming up and going. And as a pot smoker in this house, mm-hmm. sometimes it would fucking worry me. Oh, I'd be man. looking out my window That's like, funny. where's where's the fucking van? The joke's for you. Right? I'm looking, where's the fucking <laughs> van? He said, like, he has a legit Probably, serious conversation with me about this. Probably a couple years into this, I talked to my neighbor. I'm like, hey, have you seen this fucking Wi-Fi? And he starts, <laughs> he starts pissing himself laughing. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, are you... St- <laughs> why Why are you fucking laughing at me, Ian? I'm like, why are you laughing at me? And then he, Ian proceeds, name dropped. <laughs> he proceeds to tell me <laughs> fucking Ian that it's me. his Wi-Fi. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. The fact that it made him so uncomfortable, I'm like, well, I got to do that. Like, I got to put that on my network and see if any of my fucking I've, neighbors. As a, as a pot smoker, I have never once felt like I was doing anything wrong. I've never been paranoid while smoking. None of that. The CSIS mobile unit as a Wi-Fi name, yeah. it fucked with me in my own house. As it was he like told me, I'm like, like, dude, someone's fucking with you. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like seeing it was like seeing the boogeyman under your covers. It's, yeah, yeah. It wasn't fair. Like it, uh, fuck, like right now. 
like a, a message in the fog on the mirror oh, after a shower. I do that in and hotel like forgetting rooms. about it, and then the next time it fogs up, the message comes back. It's like, what the fuck? Like, oh, buy groceries on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Exactly. Well, this will be interesting. Yeah. I ask almost every guest this, but what's on your playlist? Yeah. Like, what are you listening Dude, like, to? Like, what are we on a first date? Like, I hate that fucking question from girls. Like, so what's who you? What music do you listen to? Like, a lot, a lot. You'll discover it. You as should have read that article. <laughs> yeah. What not to ask? Interesting. Comics. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so can you hit me with some of those questions? Uh, yeah, I can find it. Hold on. I don't know. You guys, um, for music, are you? Uh, do you, do you I like anything the with gamut? the beat, man. Yeah. I let the body make the decisions, not the mind. All right. Beautiful. I'll I say like that, that again. I, can... I let the body make the decisions, not the mind. I don't read an artist's name or the title or the song or where it is on the billboard, top 50, 100, whatever. It, are the hips moving? Do I have control over my body? No. You and me then are very good. similar in then that regard. Then good. I'm moving, and it's good. It gets to heart. It gets to save. So my playlist is just years of whatever I was feeling at that week. So it's really not like uh, accurate to who I am now. It's ever-changing. Fair enough. That's beautiful. That's it's, I'm ever changing. It's, it's not a it's not a brand. It's a feel. Yeah, and you know who hates that answer? All women. All <laughs> girls want you to just say two artists. I like Keith Urban and Tame Impala. You know, <laughs> say two, and then I like Keith Urban and Tame Impala. Oh my God, we are together. But you what know? about Whoa. Billie Eilish? I can't tell them about dance and how I evolve, <laughs> but I can tell you guys, and I like. They don't that. give a fuck All if right. you evolve. All right, I got this. Art. I got these questions. Okay. Oh, that'll be fun. No, question's not to ask a call. I hate how I have to, like, look at it this close. Dear World. Okay, hold on. You guys talk You ask second. Dear World? You guys talk first. That'd be a... Uh, we, we all fin- right, here we go. Here we, we go. We finished the show off here with questions, go. but this is... Well, we'll do this. This is exciting. What not to ask comedians, so specifically Jen Kirkman, but whatever. Uh, how did you get your start in comedy? Uh, like I said, with radio, um, being hitting the wall in radio... Still being told I'm funny by everyone, friends and stuff. And then also that memory of like, ah, the comics that came in every Friday, like that was dope. Where was your first show? And that's that's that was my real question of all this is what was your first uh, open mic? Uh, so I went to Kelowna. I went to a different province Jesus so that if Christ. I bomb, it's in the secrecy <laughs> of the night. Was that Cougars by any chance? No. Oh. Uh, I think Old Flanagan's is the oh, name okay. of the pub. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, it was a $100 contest. Uh, funniest... Uh, Person with a day job, I think it was called, or like, right? <laughs> Which, yeah. I love it. Okay, yeah. So that's why it's the worst credit. So there's another contest in Edmonton called that, where bona fide comics compete for, and it's called funniest person with a day job, because the reality is, is most comics in Canada have day jobs. Yeah. Um, to I don't know. I don't because I just have to support me. Fair enough. Not a big deal. Don't have a family, so don't need to sell fucking printers on the side. Gotcha. To feed a mouse. See, that's how out of touch I am with print jobs. I don't know. Yeah. Do people sell printers? <laughs> Pretty sure the internet sells I couldn't have a job. Now. I don't know what to do. I don't know what a job is. <laughs> your your skills are really wrapped yeah. up in writing jokes. Though. It's been two years, and I won that contest two years ago in Edmonton. Funniest person with a day job. Came back to the radio office next morning. Bright and bushy-tailed. Brought it home to Calgary. Stole it. Funniest person with a day job in Edmonton, and the Calgarian won it. Brought Hell it back yeah. to the nest. What's up, fellas? Yeah. Yeah, we need to talk to you, actually. Good timing. You fired. Oh. Really? Lost my day job. Jesus. Shit. Like, so I, I got to give this title back. Booted me out the window, you know, to just, you know, fly birdie, right? So, Did you say something offensive up there, or were they just like, I don't know. What do you mean up there? In Edmonton, like... I won the contest. Yeah, but like, did they let you go because you won the contest, or no? I drove up to compete. Yeah, by each round, getting through, and uh, yeah, I just didn't really make a big deal about me being in Calgary. Did. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. Well, and then kind of after I had the check in my hands, I was yeah. like, "Yeah, by the way, I'm Calgarian. See you later." <laughs> you know. Uh that's amazing. Yeah, weasel, weasel job. Honestly, fuck Edmonton. So yeah, that's uh, I, I did the first show in Kelowna because I, if I bomb then it's in a different province that new cycle is not going to hit Calgary <laughs> um, uh, I did well and yeah it's what it was called like funniest fucking schmuck and um, and they were schmucks they were just like old drunk men talking about jizz one guy talked just about jizz for nine minutes so d- did you plan Ooh, all this? Like, did you yeah, have man. like? I uh, sat on my buddy's back patio and with paper and like went through just like ah, what are the bits that hit with my friends like the most okay go to the favorites that's and cool. like two of them, 
like still work to this day. Like I'll use them in my act if I forget where I'm going or whatever. Like they're like my parachute jokes. Like, oh, the old trusty, I know how that goes. And Perfect. when I'm saying it, I can guarantee you I'm not even in my body for it. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do next. But it's buying me the minute of time I need. You, know? you just throw it on autopilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it cool. gets half the laughs as it did back then because I'm not honest about it, but whatever. Still, you know? dude, like it's it's awesome that you have that um, yeah. that emergency shoot that you can just pull it's when practice. it's – Yeah. Because that is. Like yeah. I was going to say, like <clears throat> I have actually written down there, have you ever blanked on stage and like what happened after? Yeah, like on Monday, dude. Like <laughs> I don't – when you're trying new jokes – um, it's sometimes hard to remember to where to slide them in into the act where they make sense. Okay. Oftentimes you're leaving the stage, like looking at your notes and going, ah, fuck. I missed like everything I came here to do. <laughs> like, ah, I missed that tag, that tag, that tag. So unless you want to look at your notes or your hand or whatever you want to do. Right. Yeah. And I've always been uncomfortable doing that. I just sort of like, well, I'm doing a show here. Like I shouldn't be looking at my phone. A lot of comics put their phone on the stool for the time. It's like, I just wear a watch, but <laughs> yeah, you can bring out your phone. Like, we're told at the dinner table, it's rude to bring out the phone, but like all these people that paid to see you, you're just going to like text on stage. Put it like right on your, yeah, that's a. Whatever. So different styles. It doesn't really distract that much from it, but uh, yeah, uh, you go blank. Um, yeah, I've bombed, of course. Uh, that's just part of growing, right? Yeah. You just, as long as it's not often, you'll be fine. There you go. What was one of the other. Yeah. Things we're not supposed to ask. Yeah. All right, let's look. Because I'm intrigued question. now that I asked this fucking yeah. horrible question. Yeah, All right, uh, what's it like being a woman in comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. that one. Please, <laughs> please tell me, dude. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this that one doesn't really. Play. This doesn't that play either. Play. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, it's just yeah. That one doesn't play. That's, that's a big. That's a bigger argument than just the comic side of things. Here's it? actually a good bad one. Uh, when did you first know you were funny? And tell us your best joke. No, no. Oh, no. dude, yo, people forget interviews, forget radio podcasts. People fucking have the nerve to ask that at the gym. What? Do do people honestly do that when they find out you're a comedian? They're <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> make me laugh. Get, yeah, get a load of this dude at the gym. He just oh. so I got my headphones on. Now, a um, little fact about me. Often, when my headphones or um, my over-the-ear headphones are on my head, <laughs> there's no music playing. I want you to think there's music playing, but I'm doing a little listening, doing a little recon, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's actually how I snuck into the gym for years, up until I was 18, when it becomes real, real life. Right. Mm-hmm. I never had a gym membership to Talisman Center. Uh, I would wait at the back. Are you guys familiar with Talisman Heck Center? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> My wife so, used to work there. Right. Yeah. So you know the stairway, right? Yep. So if you go behind the railing um, where you can overview the swimming, right? That yep. that deck right there. Yeah. So there is a low, uh, the glass is everywhere else high, but there is a partition, a break in the glass where it's just railing up to your hip. And then on the other side of that railing is the downstairs. So it's like a drop of like a full height, like six feet. So if you go over the glass and move a little bit to your left, you're working your way up the stairs and the drop is less. But when you work your way to the left of the stairs, you're also opening yourself to the gap in the entrance when people are entering. I know what you're talking about. So you get about a step to the left before you're compromising possible optics. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but you're gonna you're gonna negate your jump by another foot, so it's real. It's just hop over, left Last step, chance you're gonna down, roll that ankle, right? down to the ass. No, be safe about it. No hopping onto an uneven surface. Oh, okay, right. it's yeah. not worth it. Go just right to the ass, stairs. ass on the ledge, and then off onto the stairs. It's a nice, nice controlled landing. Now the headphones have to be on at this point because you are landing on the upstairs. People are coming up those stairs that you're landing on. You're supposed to be on the other side. So you're looking downstairs for traffic coming up. You're looking upstairs for traffic coming in. When you see your break, you take it. You hop over, okay? <laughs> now, this is why it's even better because not only are you not paying the fuck the $15 drop-in fee. It's crazy. I'm literally dropping in. <laughs> I'm here, dropping okay? And fuck your Supermax pump workout, pre-workout powder for fifty nine ninety nine. You want to get the heart racing before a workout? Commit a crime. Break in. <laughs> I'm with you there. You okay? Need... Now I'm racing. Now I'm warmed up. Let's go. So the headphones are on, and only one time in my fucking illustrious career of jumping, only once 
did the uh, cleaner who oh. happened to be sitting behind the stairs with her cart. And, uh, and, she, and right away when I dropped, <laughs> I, I knew the jig was up. But headphones are on, so the head starts nodding. You know what I mean? We're listening to Megadeth right now. We're selling the job. And she goes, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Like Filipino lady, excuse me, get back here. Excuse me. And I just, I pick up the pace of the walk, bang, 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 get some separation. And as soon as I turn left around that corner, that long hall, Mm-hmm. Yeah. I go down to the main desk. Yeah. As soon as I turn left, I go, okay, well, what do I got to lead on her? A couple, three seconds. So three seconds of turbo. Go. Boom. Turbo. Bang, 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 bang. Now we're Jason Bourne. Now we're running away from <laughs> the cleaner from the before the workout. <laughs> so now I have a gym bag with me. And it's like, okay, um, if I go to a bathroom, I'm cornered. We got to change on the go. I literally changed like I was like... Like a Boston Red Sox game was letting out, and I'm sitting there reversing my hat and my jacket and walking to the C train platform. And I got changed. I literally changed my clothing, like put on um, pants over what I was wearing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And changed up as much as I could while doing a loop through the workout area and did a full loop and then walked across the basketball court back to the uh, entrance. And literally ran into her again and, like, looked her right in the eyes as a different person. She didn't recognize you, yeah, did she? She didn't know. No. She lost me. All right. And the best workout of my life. <laughs> you had your pre-workout. Calories. 200 calories walking around. That's oh, it. yeah. I was done. And then I cashed out. Went home. Got the sweat. Got my BPM or whatever. The frugal forte. Yeah, yeah. That should so, be your hu- uh, That's what your hustle should be called, the frugal forte. That is. That that is amazing. Did you know that? I did not you, know that. You thought you made it up, but it's literally what it's I. It's too good, yeah, for me to make up. I have a segment weekly uh, on Vancouver's uh, Peak One Hundred Two Seven, the Peak. Uh, their morning show out there called Frugal Fridays with Frugal Forte. I call in as their um, advisor, their no financial advisor, way. and Dude. I just give kind of funny tips like uh, free fruit. Like I found this app that. Uh, shows you where all the fruit trees, public fruit trees, or ones in people's yards are growing in your city. <laughs> no way. And on this interactive map, so they're, they're all labeled of like where the apples and oranges, strawberries. Some poor fuck blueberries. has gone around documenting it. Not some poor fuck, like a network of people. Like it's a. Oh, they put it out there like, hey, yeah. where are the fruit trees? Yeah. So like a raspberry, bo- raspberry is the highest price fruit there is per pound. It's a luxury. It's a well, five you, cent well, candy. Hold on. You want our frugal? Uh, Let's hear it. You, yeah, bear put, view. Put, no, no, no. Fuck you. Put me on the map in the backyard of this house. Well, yeah. This I house. purposely grow raspberries for people to walk through the back alley and eat the raspberries. You do that? Yes. Because. Because. Yes, Jesse. We grew up in Fairview, and in Fairview, yeah. for some reason, the alley, every alley was littered with raspberry bushes. It was like you're in Narnia. You're in. It was. Bush. It was amazing, and I was and so disappointed trees. to find out that this isn't a normal thing oh, no. in Calgary. I just assumed raspberries were growing all over Calgary. We we no. would routinely like. Half of our summers were spent walking through the back alleys, picking apples off of crab apple trees. Ah, crab apples nothing to write, there was, write home about. But some of them had get a worm in there. You find it. the yeah. odd house that would have an apple tree. That's nice. So you'd get a big one. Yeah. One or two places had pear trees. Yep. And tons of raspberries everywhere you'd go. So I can't believe there's an app for that now. Yeah, man. And now, so like. Calgary, it's very sparsely populated. No one gives a shit. It's not huge. a lot of fruit Vancouver, here. heavily populated, but unfortunately, because of their climate, not a lot of options for tropical fruits and vegetables. Ah. Uh, you go down to LA, I got forty-two different locations of avocado trees <laughs> I can pull up. Literally, it's forty-two. Whoa, that's a fucking <laughs> gold mine because avocados are. Pug- Turn that shit into toast. Oh, Millennials. Find some free bread. Eat that oh, shit up, man. Jesse, that's how old you are. You don't turn avocado into toast. You put avocado on but toast. But he's got half the half the ingredients. He's onto something, you know? And avocado toast. And it doesn't even have to be toast or avocado. You just name it yeah. avocado toast. And Dragon s- fruit kumquat. You know what a kumquat is? I got it I just it bought free. a dragon fruit. Yeah. Where no can way. you get dragon fruit for free? Absolutely. On that yeah. It's gross. In California. What's the name gross. of this app? Um, Steal your fruit <laughs> Holy fuck uh, Holy shit I just forgot the name of it Hold on It'll I'll look it up me. I'll look uh, it up Fallingfruit.org Dude that's the best Org It's an org. org It's an org So they're an organization 
Must be. So you call weekly into a Vancouver radio station and just kind of... Yeah, whether it's like free coffee at the bank or like whatever. Is it early? Like, do you got to call in at like six in the morning? No, you we, guys just, get to like we a... pre-tape later Perfect. in the day. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those radio uh, we tricks. We just ruined the magic. No, it's one of the radio tricks. I'm sure... Yeah. That's actually one of the things... We've had a couple of radio people on. They didn't yeah, give us never those DJ ninety two's big sound here. Did you guys hear about that? The big yeah, big it was like a, like fifteen thousand to... grand or fifteen thousand grand, fifteen thousand or something like that. Yeah, and um, and it's weird because now like it used to be like caller nine or caller number ninety two gets it. Right mm-hmm. now it's you text in at certain times and text number ninety two gets contacted by us. We'll call you. Oh. Which is convenient, which is why a jackpot can grow so high because they can be very selective of who they're calling and they can avoid what is called in the industry prize pigs. People that are daily listeners of all stations and very good at radio contests and devote their lives to calling with multiple phones, home lines, cell phones, uh, people uh, that work at hospitals. Apparently, the phones that are in hospitals get through a little bit quicker than anyone else's phone. Oh. Right? Shit. So if you get to text in all these texts, like hundreds, thousands come in, you can kind of dodge your mind. It's like playing Minesweeper and seeing you kind of mind. find the right. So you're like, yeah, one. let's yeah. grow this juicy Whoa. fucker up. Right. So that's all that's going on there. Dude, that was... So when you're like, oh, they're not calling me, nah, maybe there's a reason. Yeah. Stop texting so much, yeah. maybe. So now, would you go as far as to say that it's rigged? That's not maybe not CJ. It. Maybe not CJ. Maybe it's not like, as fair as like actually number ninety two didn't get it. But who cares? If you're upset about that, get over yeah, it. I mean, and in that case, you're probably not ninety two anyways. Right. And unless your name's Peggy Pang, which I remember that girl we banned, she would get through all the time. Or when I was working in radio, I had a little uh, like caller ID that would show me the number number that's calling in. So I would just know certain numbers. Like, ah, it's Peggy again. It's Fuck, Shane. Really? Shane would always call in. Shane and Peggy. I knew Shane and Peggy. So like. Try to avoid them. But sometimes you get fucked in a pinch. You go live with a caller. Who is this? It's Peggy. Ah. Fuck. <laughs> ah, fuck, it's Peggy. So is everyone like, just take fuck. the money, Peggy. You fucking won. <laughs> yeah. You got it, you pig. Here's your fucking 30-second prize. You... Uh, I told an audience, uh, a listener that one time, like, I-, I thought it would be fun for them to know. I'd be like, listen, you're like you're such an avid listener of our station. And, like, I see you weekly coming in, getting your gift cards to Tony Roma's and whatever, your movie passes that you're winning. <laughs> And, like, would you know that the saying the radio industry has come up for you, you're called a prize pig. <laughs> a pig of all the animals. And she's like, oh, really? A pig? Like, like how flattering, right? We had, like, a joke about it. And I was like, have a good day, you know? And in my mind, I'm like, I'm inviting this girl to the other side of the curtain. Yeah. I'm including her. You, I'm not calling you. I'm just saying, like, this is, it would be fun for you to know this information, I yeah. would think. Yeah. Uh, and even her reaction in the moment was nice, and she like joked back. And then she takes that elevator down, and then later that day, an email, a very long one, strongly worded, is sent to my boss. She's like, your employee made me feel like this, 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 pig, called me a pig. <laughs> Call, you're like, but ma'am, told you- the story <laughs> so out of sorts. Like, So I came in to f- get a prize. And one of your employees looked at me and called me a pig. <laughs> like, well, that's not exactly how it went down. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, and I wish I remembered the, I fucking, I got to find the picture of it. I remember took a photo of it. But there was one phrasing that she had that was just, like, so poorly done. It made me sound like such an asshole. And I got to tell my boss, like, nah, this is how it went down. Like, she's just In soft. radio, do they appreciate the shock value or did they have to ride this fine line where no, there's, there's enough to keep people laughing, but not enough to where Peggy, hmm. you know, can't write fucking emails. Well, it turns out Peggy like was just milking us for more pricing. Cause then what the boss does is like, Oh, allow me to like give you some more passes to cover up for our mistake. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. She's just fucking squeezing the towel a bit more, getting a few it's more drops. So greasy. Uh, but to answer your question, man, uh, radio is pretty safe across the board. There's a few stations like X 92, nine in Calgary, which is awesome. I love working with them cause they are allowed to say what they want for the most part. They seem to be pretty free and they're very, all of them are very, uh, individuals they're all different than your classic cookie cutter 
broadcaster. I loved their morning show with Roger and Frazier. Hey. It was so good. We've had Frazier on the show. It, I worked. I was. I produced for Frazier for like two years. That's awesome. Uh, cool he's FM. such yeah. a cool guy. Like, like <laughs> dude, he, he's like the Joe Rogan of Calgary. Exactly. People ride that guy's dick. And he cracked the fucking mic <laughs> so many times with like. He's such a booming voice. It like, dude, he he's got that radio voice, but then he's got he can do the cheesy radio voice. He can do the fucking oh. booming radio voice, and then just talking to him on one on one, it was so fucking. The best was hearing him argue with his co-host after each show, being next door, like editing and hearing through the walls them scream at each other. Right? Oh, like, jeez. And I'm not. Throw, I'm not giving any intel no, no. that isn't not known in the radio industry. Maybe not to listeners, but if you think the morning show, Buzzsaw, Bishop, and the Hammer get along <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> no, Buzzsaw <laughs> hates the Hammer. The Hammer fucked Bishop's wife. Like They don't like each other at all. And they clock in, and they're in this fucking cell together. And then after, they let it out. You know, Not every show, but it happens. There's a cycle. Just I saying. worked with Tarzan Dan from the Hit List. You want to talk nineties? He's still on. Oh, yeah. hey, he's, he's still back. He's, he's still, on like. Oh yeah. Was it one hundred and three or one hundred and seven? One hundred and seven. Yeah. What's his name? Someone just retired. Coach. Coach. Coach, coach just out. retired. Yeah. Don Joanne. That's what. It was. Don Joanne the coach. I was going to say he wasn't. Those it wasn't Don Joanne and the coach. But I was going to say those three motherfuckers. They no. cannot like each I other. I never really met them, but I'll guarantee you they don't like each other. That was years. That was fucking yeah. decades of. Uh, Beckler and Shauna X. They like each other. Good. You know, and you kind of get that, that feel too. I feel like, I feel like Katie yeah. Summers and um, Ed. Ed, Ed, I think they let, uh, re- at least respect each other. I don't, I don't know. I'd be speaking out of turn. I don't know, but I would say no. No, I would say no. We've, we've, had, we've had if I'm playing the numbers. If I'm playing the numbers, we've had Katie on the show, so I don't want to like make waves. <laughs> uh, I remember Katie has, has no idea who I am, but. Uh, when they did the bank it or burn it contest where they had, I think, $10,000. Yeah. And they're like, just vote. Like, should we burn the money to a crisp or give it to someone? Right? <laughs> Everyone voted burn it, didn't they? Right, right. Because <laughs> fuck it. Fuck yeah. society. Fuck Let's other people, happens. man. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And then when the vote actually came in, it was like, burn it. And they did. And they posted like a video of it. Like, the city went nuts. It- and they're like, you can't do that. It should have went to a homeless person. She just fucking paid for this sex change Timothy needs or whatever the society's fucking, you Dude, know, rant was that Now week. they're the biggest morning show in the fucking city. No. They're syndicated. They're not. They are they replay them and shit. Uh, Where? Um, um, some app. I think it's Radio Player Canada. They get replayed or... every day on primetime, 5 o'clock or something. Like I, At what? On, on other what? radio stations around Canada. Okay. Yeah, that, that's owned by that parent company. See, you know all the which insides. Is, yeah, is see, this is, a, this is, this the, is exciting. This, yeah, this yeah. is cool. Like, cause, so that's what's going on then. It's just the, the same company is just pushing it yeah. on their other stations. I don't know what their book is now. That's what they call it. The book. The spring book. Summer book. Hey, no, fall book. Winter book. No hate to Katie. Call them PPMs. <laughs> all right. Uh, PPMs. PPMs are the are the meters that uh, give you ratings for radio. Do, One, they, do they tell you when you turn it off? 1,000 people in the city approximately have a little pager attached to their hip that listens to whatever they're subjected to, whatever station. Every station has a silent frequency in it that is different, their own, like, thumbprint. Oh, okay? Okay. And this machine picks up those individual frequencies and lets you know how long you've been listening yeah. and at what times of the day. And then you plug it into your computer, and then it gives that... Uh, info back and then they take that thousand person sample size and they just multiply it for the population of Calgary so if two people P1 listeners as they're called like number one like they listen heavy as a family and they go on a month vacation to Europe and they don't listen to your station at all you drop a whole share point maybe two maybe two share points which is worth two million dollars that's how shitty it is because it's only a thousand people representing what is one point what something million. Fuck? Really? And it's worse outside of major cities. It's done by a journal. So in Kelowna or fucking Red Deer, you have to just, there's some people that are given a journal, like a physical diary, and they're like, yeah, just write down every week like when you listen to what. Like anyone's going to be accurate. What the fuck? So it's all bullshit, and it's just for a payday. These people are paid, wow. and you got to make sure they're not uh, involved in the broadcasting industry in any way. How do you... It's Base like a business off of that. Yeah, I know, man. So things can go up and down, and really your money is made when Sears and the Bay does their big advertising buy for the fall when they just look at the top three stations in the market. Okay, Country 105, XL 103, X92.9. We don't care what music they play. They're the top. We're going to give them our money. 
And then, so those national advertisers have good money. It's not just like fucking bring it into Glassmasters on Here's the corner of McLeod and Blackfoot. Get your glass. Right? Show okay. us your crap. Yeah, that's what it is. Like that's well, I don't. That one's kind of middle range, but um, there's like, examples of that. You're 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 getting big corporate money because of a pager on someone's hip. That's insane. Wow. I didn't know. I thought that was. Because like I've like the Nielsen Dated ratings technology. or whatever, like the Nielsen rate, the way TV works is kind of the same thing as like a bunch of people sign up on an email and then yeah. they survey those thousand people and that or what it's it's a lot of people. There's tons of surveys and stuff as well, uh, but those don't count for the official rating. That's the only survey nuts. worth doing is the one Tim Hortons gives you with the receipt, so you can get ten Timbits for a buck. Oh, that's big. It's I didn't only, know about that. It's the only one online, and it gives you a code or something. Yep. Yeah, online. Ten eight, for a dollar? Ten for a dollar. What's the normal price on that? Ten. They're like, uh, what is it? F- That's like a two eighty nine. I think they're under fifty cents per. I think it's a two eighty nine. Yeah. That's so not it's, bad. You're, it's, you're it's saving really money there. I've I've recently got that receipt a lot because it seems a lot of people behind the counter feel for a dad with their kid out. You go get six Timbits and like, are you sure you don't want ten? And you're like, oh, six is the lowest. And, and no, you can get <laughs> one. You can get. Two, oh my god, who right? buys like four Timbits? That's got to right? be the saddest oh fucking purchase in the history. Try this. I show up to. I was in Chinook Center and I had change in my pocket. Right, so I'm like, I'm going with yeah. a toonie for my coffee, and then a dollar twenty five for, for the donut. whatever the fuck I can get Timbits for my daughter. Nice. So I'm like, okay, can I get like six Timbits? And I see the price, and I'm like, "No, you can't." <laughs> can you? Can I get four? Can I get four Timbits? And the guy looks at me kind of queer, like, hmm? "Uh, what? Like your fucking debit card don't work?" And I, I have change in my hand, and I'm looking at my change. I'm like, "Yeah, can you get rid of like uh, two Timbits?" So I give him the change. He stuffs two more Timbits in there, so I got eight fucking Timbits. I'm like, my daughter doesn't need eight fucking Timbits. I wanted but six he, for a reason. And he felt petty for you. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then he goes, if you fill out the survey on this receipt, you get ten for a dollar next time get you come. Get your food stamp. You so, exactly. So I'm like, oh, I got a food stamp. It was like a, it was like a pity fucking hey. Fill out the fucking thing in Co- your receipt. Right? Couple, couple of years ago, I was <laughs> in the McDonald's drive thru and the fucking. <laughs> declined and it wasn't like i didn't have any money it's just like the card wasn't working i was like oh just wait just wait let me he's like don't worry about it i got it this stuff's like fuck you (laughs) it sucks that you look like a person that would be broke and you just yeah Yeah, it's like no yeah that's true i keep a low profile yeah it's it's, it's those big skate shoes you were in the dc fat tongues thick tongue I can't believe like, thick guy, shoes aren't in anymore. Like, this guy God damn. probably doesn't have a job. Look at his shoes. <laughs> Look at his shoes. Oh, is that a thick tongue? Yeah. That, so if you go the, online, yeah. you can what's get the, 10 Timbits <laughs> for a dollar. I think my new favorite meme had the DC shoes on at the Kyle. I Kyle memes about Monster. Like God. Monster Energy. It's like the starter pack for Monster Energy oh, is okay. the DC skate shoes. Yeah. The flat brim hat backwards. Uh, I don't What was backwards. it? There was there was a there was a fucking like a the no fear shirt or whatever the fuck. Yeah, it some is. balls hanging from the back of your yeah, truck. It's these, <laughs> yeah, it's these big things yeah. that's Kyle, you know, the it looks like uh Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but it's this guy in a monster hat in a punching pose and there's holes in the drywall. Like ah. Kyle drinks monster punches holes. Why'd you in the have drywall? to say Kyle? My middle name is Kyle. <laughs> well, yeah. Why'd you have to say that? Yeah, why'd you have to tell people? It's Nobody knew. Semi half common knowledge, but eh. probably not to our no. eh. listeners. Nobody knew until now you said they know that. I'm a Kyle. For <laughs> fuck's sakes, you shouldn't even be a Jesse. It's true. You, you should be a Cody, Cody. Was a Jesse. And... Yeah, you don't have the hair for a Jesse. Hey, what's crazy is out of all of <laughs> Which the years. I've never fucking heard that before. No, out of all honest. of the years that Jesse and I have been friends, no one has. We're talking like 28 plus no, years. No, I wouldn't go that far. It was the first thing I said to you. Six. Met you today and went, oh, hey, Cody. Oh, Jesse. Yeah, you guys should not be each other. You should be each other. Switch those. We'll names. go 20 years. You guys want to start? Yeah. <laughs> should, should, should switch it? So, honey. We had a talk on the podcast today, and yeah. my name's Cody now. Just like, what? Would you be like, finally? Fine. That's what I've been desiring. <laughs> no. No, done. no. And that just your got your really conversation would be a little worse. You'd be like, <laughs> babe, I'm, a co- I'm 
I'm a, I'm a Jesse now. I'm a Jesse. Sorry. Jesse. She'd be like, what? She'd be like, oh, fine, I can come. <laughs> Good. But I've been waiting been to waiting say to that come. for so fucking long. I'd be really hey, Jesse, upset if I If I'm that. a girl, like, oh, I yell out Jesse, that just feels good. If you're like, oh, I made it. <laughs> I'm fucking a Jesse. I'm <laughs> Jesse's girl. There's songs about this. There is. Right? And Cody's it- girl. <laughs> be boo boo. Be boo boo. Come on, dude. All I heard from my tw- in my 20s was like, Jesse's girl and uh, what's the other one? There was a, oh, I can't remember the other one, but Jesse's Stacey's gr- mom. Sta- well, Stacy's mom, like Stacy's mom and Jesse's girl. That's that's your dream. Three. Can you songs. Imagine being a Stacy with a hot mom after that song came out, and your dad's right. name was Jesse. Woman named Brit, <laughs> and your dad's Whoa. name was Jesse. <laughs> You'd be like, I'm ruined. Fuck this. this. <laughs> right. Jesse's girl is Stacy's mom. I knew a girl in the t- early two thousands. Hold on. That's the end of the story. Just knew a girl in the early two thousands. Just wanted to tell you guys about that. Big tits. Go on. Jesse's girl mm-hmm. was a song from the eighties. Mm-hmm. Stacy's mm-hmm. mom. Right. The meme is connected from, to from the nineties. Yeah, it could is be the same meme? person. Yeah. I didn't know that. People have drawn. I just kind of put that together. I'm a little slow. We're, We're slow at the it. party here. Yeah. <clears> you think happens. you're Nick Cage, fucking solving national treasure right now? It's in the numbers. Like, yeah, they proved it on Reddit. Murray, fucking AKA. Five years Murray. ago. <laughs> I love Nick Cage. He freaks out so quickly. It is so good. If you go to YouTube, there's some great. If you go to his like top, yeah, overacting Freak moments. Out. Right. Okay. He likes to start off like this, and then freaking scream the punchline. <laughs> it makes you. Right. Okay. Sounds like South Park. He has too many. There's <laughs> yeah, there's too many. My uh, favorite scene. Uh, I don't know. I got a few Nick Cage scenes. I love when in Knowing. Have you ever seen that one with the aliens? Yes. Yeah, they come and they bring like a few. Al- people off the planet and they go start a new world. Right, yeah, yeah. And like Nick's the one who discovers this plan first because he's been like keeping an eye on the numbers. <laughs> and his family's like, You're a fucking lunatic, we're leaving. Six people are missing yeah. from the from my calculation. He like he took his family, he drove them out to the woods while like all this shit's happening on the news. They're like, what's happening? He's like, Fucking no, we're not getting shelter. We're driving the opposite way on the highway against traffic and we're going out to the woods to this barn and I know there's something written on the door, you know, and his family's like, No, there isn't. You're a lunatic and he's like sitting there scraping the door and they leave. They get in the truck and they leave his ass. And, like, he finally, like, scrapes it down, and there's, like, 9071. He's like, oh, wait a second, like, 9 plus 0 plus 7 minus 1. I'm like, oh, fuck, 911. It's in the numbers. And it was actually like that. Like, the numbers that were given, every fourth, like, grouping, if you circled, was, like, 911. And then, like, the date Kennedy was shot. And all the big, like, things in history were dates in these numbers. Shit. And then so he circles the next one, which is, like, coming up in a couple of days. Something's going to happen. It's in the numbers. And this family just drives off in an F-150. My favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Dad has, Dad has finally fucking snapped. Leave He's him yelling. in the bar and we gotta go. We gotta He's go. yelling Fuck at a barn door. Guy. I fucking get it. He's like, she's so happy. He's like, I fucking get it. Guys. And they're gone. You do a, you do a good cage. <laughs> it turns around to nobody. All right. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Well, that Cody. is fucking incredible. My beard does look good now that you ask. <laughs> it's, you put oil on that? It is. Uh, I haven't used you get your oil, oil in a from while. Frazier? Hold on, you're gonna. Fraser no, no. gets me. I just rub his beard. No, no, no. With my hands. You're, you're gonna like. We this. did hand Fraser some of this. Yeah. Would you like to know what it is? Yeah, what is it? BigDobsBeardBomb.com. Use that promo code Ruckus, R-U-C-K-U-S, for a 20% discount at checkout. He's got balm. He's got oil. He's got combs. He's got hats. He's got shirts. BigDobsBeardBomb.com. Use that promo code Ruckus, R-U-C-K-U-S. But no video to show off the beard in question. (laughs) An audio (laughs) description of something very physical. We take pictures sometimes. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You'll have a photo probably up on your Instagram taken together. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Tell the tell the followers to shoot me the follow. I, I try to put good content on, so you're not wasting uh, your time. You put amazing content on. Yeah. At Brett Forte. That's it. Are you and then that YouTube's unanimous coming soon. throughout uh, your socials? Did you manage to snag every Brett Forte on the internet? Oh, Twitter's like Brett underscore Forte. I don't give a fuck about Twitter or anything else. Just, yeah. Let's just keep it to one. The YouTube's coming soon. Exactly. There. There YouTube, you Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Let's not get greedy here. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a TV station. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> right? Beautiful. One okay. 
Here's one of our favorite parts. We like to shut the show down with 10 questions. We okay. stole them from a guy who stole them. Don't fucking ask questions. Let's just roll with it. Get it. These may be questions we got to, ones we missed, whatever the fuck it is. Here we go. Okay. What's your favorite word? Uh, electroencephalogram. I uh, learned it in grade two. It's 20 letters long because, you know, when you're young and uh, you're learning words, well, I want to be the best at learning words. I want to have the longest word because I'm number one. So I learned electroencephalogram, E-L-E-C-T-R-O-E-N-C-E-P-H-L-A-G-R-A-M, electroencephalogram. Holy fuck. What does okay? it mean? Wrote it on my fucking, the doors of my closet, my bedroom, okay? <laughs> and it mean, it's just a, a device that measures brain waves. Okay. It's like a hospital, piece of hospital equipment. Like EKG? Yeah. So uh, that's 20 letters. Showcase that one. Uh, that parade lasted like a whole two days. And then Curtis Gibbs comes to school. Fucking Curtis Gibbs comes with this word. And we've all heard it. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. I go, say it out loud. That's three words. That's three fucking words. And he's like, oh, it's 36 letters. It beats you. He's like, fuck you, Curtis Gibbs. Curtis Gibbs would have his leg stretched out and capture the flag, okay? Like, you know when you're in jail and you have to stretch the line out long to try to get saved again? Yeah. yeah. So we're all hands to legs but stretched out wide, and he's, he's fucking, uh, what, 10 years old? And he's like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, what, Curtis? He's like, oh, it's my dick. My dick hurts. I'm like, why, Curtis? Why does it hurt? I'm beside him. We're touching my left foot to his right foot. Why? Oh, cause the fuck, dude, my legs are spread, dude. I got, I don't know, fuck. Obviously, you don't know, but like, if you got a big dick, this hurts, <laughs> right? Cause everyone's trying to fucking Ooh. sell the big dick theory when you're young. Everyone's got a fucking piece on them, right? And he's saying, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm just logically going, like, what is it webbed to your leg? Like, what do you yeah. mean? Is it ripping? Shouldn't it be just <laughs> hanging in the middle? Yeah. Like, I feel like this would be the most comfortable he spot. Goes, no, it's eight inches. That's what he says. It's eight inches. It hurts. At ten, at 10 years old. <laughs> so he's he's spreading this propaganda about his fucking, the cock on him. Meanwhile, he's crying almost daily in class. When he's confronted or asked, like, where's your homework, Curtis? Okay. I got an eight inch dick. I can't do right. homework. And, it, and he would use it to sop up his tears every fucking class. <laughs> oh, sorry. I forgot, Miss Beauty. I forgot. Like, why are you crying, Curtis? That was always the question. Hey, why are you crying? Like a girlfriend in a relationship. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> All of a sudden, you're just crying? What's going on? It was that out of the blue that a teacher, an adult, was like, why are you crying? She just had enough of it. And, uh, and he's like, I have Graves' disease. Graves' disease. Now, pre-internet, all of us like, what the fuck is that? All right. We repeat it to our parents at fucking dinner. And then our parents either pretend to know it or not know it. And then that's Ooh, as far as we sounds get. Sounds pretty rough. And then when Google came out, when fucking whatever 2004 came along, okay, that was my first Google search. <laughs> what is Graves' disease? All right? I'm, I'm like grade 12 or whatever it is. No, not grade 12, 2004. I'm like grade 8. Okay. So I Google it, and it's uh, uh, something that affects women's ovaries. <laughs> oh, fuck. He fucking, he lied to us the whole time. This little bitch with his 8-inch dick and his long bullshit word. <laughs> was he still in your letters. school at this point? Like it was, yeah. Fucking A. Eh. Be like, your dick's probably only six inches, you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> like, so there's my favorite word and most hated word. That's amazing. That's funny you say that because... Question the two. What's question you just two answered question two. <laughs> your least favorite word. Okay, well, real answer would be like meal prep I don't like. I don't like... Oh, that's good. Just call it cooking. Just <laughs> call preparing. it leftovers. Yeah, just, you're just preparing your food. Meal yeah. prep is leftovers. Grocery, shop, grocery shopping, meal prep, whatever it is. Don't make just it a thing. Don't be is. pretentious. Oh, don't say foodie. <laughs> oh, you like food. You eat. Munch. You yeah. enjoy, you're fat. You I'm enjoy food. I'm an air. I'm, I breathe. I'm a breathe. I'm, I'm, I'm an airy. What? You're an Aries? No. No, I'm no, no. I'm an airy. I'm an airy. I enjoy air. I, I only breathe. I'm an H2O. Yeah. <laughs> you accentuate the O. <laughs> Perfect. I'm an H2O. <laughs> you're saying it wrong. My God. <laughs> Fuck you. O? My H2O? I constantly shit on my wife's mom because she has this fancy water thing She's that German porn. puts like mm. something in your water or filters your water some special way to make you age less and do all this kind of shit so oh, yeah. 
she always shows up with her fucking water bottle. I'm like, Maya, my daughter Maya knocked her water bottle over. I'm like, hey, fucking careful. Right. It's like $5,000 worth of water. <laughs> the, the fountain of youth. Yeah. Right? Or anytime <laughs> she goes and gets water from my tap, I'm like, whoa. Like, f- just shit Is on her. Is it connected to the tap? Like, it Yeah, but it's through? some super special. pH filter. level? Yeah, it's yeah. the pH and all this stuff. You should stuff. be like, you're looking very 29 today. I and just, yeah, you're supposed to drink the right pH. See, that's an example of society mm-hmm. like uh, thinking they're 94 octane. Like everyone's fucking a race car. Oh, I need that 94 gas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I need my pH. I need my water at a seven pH because my body's a seven pH, and that's how I run optimally. And it better be fluoride. Yeah. And uh... look, oh, are you a race car or do you wear high waisted pants to cover your gut? <laughs> like, what is it? Both. Oh, you can do fine on 87. Get yourself a cheeseburger from yeah. McDonald's. Oh, I could never eat McDonald's. Yes, you can. You'll be fine. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> what turns you on creatively? I like getting... Spiritually or emotionally? I like when girls, like, uh, razz me. Like, uh, you know, take so, the shit out of me, you know? like Someone call, who can be on your level. Yeah, call me uh, on my shit. And, um, yeah, I love a good callback. I, I just... Like that kind of uh, behavior, for sure. A strong woman. Beautiful. Yeah. What's just... uh, what's your off button then? Ah, uh, man! As soon as you like, if you start saying foodie and meal prep and stuff like this, I know you're just a sheep, and I know take you're... a picture of your food. Yeah, like hey, I everyone's take guilty. Of my beer all the time. Everyone's guilty of like little instances of this but if it's too many and it's like oh you're just a mold like oh you're lining up it made by marcus ice cream because everyone else is lining up that's the spot where we stand in line for ice cream <laughs> like it's a it's a dollar down the block at mcdonald's no line ice cream's ice cream yeah but me me marcus is better is it is it better than dairy queen like i don't know if it is i think it's made it's better because you get your little picture of your logo in front of the store or whatever you're there for that's what society's there for if you need to be there because you're told and you don't know why, then that's a turn off for me. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like it. Um, our favorite question here. Uh, my, I'm intrigued by this with your profession. What is your favorite curse word? Uh, curse word. A good fuck is, you know, nothing wrong with the good old handy fuck it can really punch a joke up if it uh if the writing isn't there yet you know a fucking something is always funnier than just a something so when you say motherfucker do you put the infinite emphasis on the mother or the fucker hmm i'm not a big motherfucker no no not into the milfs <laughs> no just don't you yeah <laughs> neither don't use the word <laughs> um question six what sound or noise do you love a sound that I love. Um, or a noise. That's okay, sick. that's a really... That's an interesting... I'm just running through the roll decks here of uh, of sounds that I like to hear. Man, I can think of like smells and sights and stuff like that, but sounds... Like the one, one that I hate is just like... Of the f- sound of someone else's phone vibrating through a couch that you're sitting on. <laughs> <What> the- <laughs> Get this fucking thing out of here. If it That's... goes like boo, boo, like once and then boo, boo, twice, oh, God forbid, boo, boo, three times? What are you doing to us? If you have three separate text messages, fine. But if you're one of those people who has their thing set uh... to just keep vibrating because you're too fucking uh-huh. ignorant to answer it. Uh, my mom does sounds. Keeps all the sounds on her phone. Uh, length- thankfully, I don't have to live with her. Uh, my dad does. And yeah, she'll be on her phone and like, like the typing sounds are on click 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 oh. and then like bring bring for this sound effect and then this person texts and that's a like oh man oh, my oh God. man it's over it's over work with those people now and have one in front of you yeah. and one off to the uh, left and another's that's probably got to be some sort of illegal in an office space it's I'm not. sorry should be speaking of office space another sound i hate is when people slurp their coffee and they go ah. after they do the ah. Now, you, now, fuck, man, if you're parched and it's your first sip and you let one off, hey, we're all human, all good. If you, every sip, right? Tarzan Dan did it, every sip. I told him to his face. I'm like, you're no good. Stop doing that. 
That's a fucked up sound. <laughs> Relax. Relax. You had water before? You're 52. You've had water. You're ruining it for everybody. <laughs> and uh, I remember saying this on radio, like speaking of like, so I didn't get on air very much. Uh, I got to do evenings on Sunday nights for Cool 101.5. And then I got to do the evening show during the weekdays for the peak, 95.3 The Peak that launched briefly. Yeah. And then I was on the morning show with Danny Kidd for a total of four shows. <laughs> One week. They said, let's let the kid loose. He <laughs> thinks he's funny. Let's see if he is. And I and I had started comedy already. Like I started while I was. So you like knew, you kind of had an idea. And because I started comedy and got a little bit of success in it, then the office was like, okay, well maybe, all right. So on one of the shows, I remember saying, that sound I hate. Ah, ah. And I was describing, I was like, could you imagine being in a cubicle all day, eight hours, 10 hours, and the person next to you through that cubicle, all like, ah, ah, ah. And then can you imagine the gauge of shotgun you would use to blow a hole through that cubicle? 12. Right? <laughs> That's it. That's all I said. And this fucking guy backs up like real life we're live on air morning show he backs up off the mic he goes whoa 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 dude not cool i understand you're trying to be funny and that's what you do but there's some things you can't make light of and shooting someone in the workplace is not what it is. <laughs> if there's anything someone wants to do at any office really like that's so it soft. like that's so soft, soft man. Hey, and very successful and rewarded in radio that's the kind backed of up off the it. microphone is what shocks me. Like he was physically taken back. That's, Soft. Yeah. This is a guy who would sit in the hallway on the computer, the prep computer. We're given one for all the jocks. And he would sit on it and keep his x ray photo open. He broke his collarbone riding his bicycle. And yeah, that's what I call it when you break your collarbone. Not a bike, a bicycle. Okay. So he broke his collarbone. And then just leave the x-ray open on the computer and people would walk by and he would just hope. They'd be like, hey, Danny, how you doing? And he'd be like, ah, not so good. And just like rope it. You could hear the person's footsteps like, step, step, step. What is it, Danny? <laughs> like now you're locked into, oh, I well, it's just the doctor said it's not healing and it may never recover. And like, oh. just woes me. He would ask people on purpose like, hey, Julie, how are you doing? Like all chipper. How are you doing, Julie? Knowing the response is what? Yeah, good. How are you? Boom. Yeah. Now you got the how are you. Oh, and now press play on his sympathy. So wow. And that's what I get mad at my girl at uh, in relationships. Like, oh, are we just looking for an excuse to be upset right now? Are we playing sad? Is this just one of those that moments? Fishing line out. Hate that, man. We watch Grey's Anatomy and every episode is heartbreak and something bad happens. And we're taught, Never like, watch Lie to Me with your girl. Oh, that was my favorite fucking show, yeah, man. Yeah, great until you get into a fucking argument with your wife who watched 14 oh, episodes no. of Lie to Me last it night with you. Because she's like, it. you looked in a weird direction and your <laughs> eyebrow fucking twitched. And you're yeah. like, shut up. Yeah, but. That's aggressive language. And you're like, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, that show was fucking based on a lot of truth. I don't know how it many is. of those facial expressions um, were how they described them. Especially, you know, looking left or right. I don't take that one f too heavily. It doesn't matter what side you look at. If you start avoiding me and eyes to the ground and stuttering, I know something's up. I can just tell by cornering you and just looking at, like... <laughs> just willing them into, like, yeah, tell yeah. me what's wrong. <laughs> oh, well, you would know. Just answer quickly. You would know. You know, just put the... Oh, why? I, did it. I, did it. Why? I love that one is when you ask someone a very, very blunt question... To people who aren't used to being asked those questions. So very often people who tell lies assume that you're just going to agree with them. Not ask too many questions. That kind of shit. So if you catch someone and you just straight up, bam, hit them with a blunt question and they start stuttering over their words and they have to think about their answer. Yeah. yeah you're like, uh is your question late at night in an alley? And is it, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> My friend Sam Walker, his favorite pickup pick up line is, getting changed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hangs out in a lot of change yeah. rooms. Getting changed, uh, yeah. huh? <laughs> it's like, I love the new YMCA. The co-ed oh. change rooms are the best. <laughs> so many opportunities. <laughs> All right. Next question. Love you it. answered the next question by the sound that you hate. Yeah, okay. Do you know these questions? <laughs> no. Like, you, like... 
you may not have answered a sound that you enjoy. <clears throat> no, I didn't, man. Man, what's a uh Okay. Used to be like a You're a basketball player, squeaky oh, shoes. Oh man, oh that's a good one like this nylon. I don't like to influence people. Do you like a but... swish? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All nylon, nylon. <laughs> nylon. I made that song the other day. I thought about that. All nylon, nylon. Right? Yeah. And it's just a compilation of just fucking nothing but net. Dude, All nylon. It would hit right now. In Canada, 100%. Uh, not with dude. Kawhi. Kawhi likes to go heavy iron for uh, a while. He likes but, to stew in iron before his shots go in. <laughs> dank, 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 dank. <laughs> and then, yeah. He's a weird dude. Yeah. He's Kawhi great. Leonard. Like, he's, he's awesome. He's, he's gonna, an intriguing character. When is this uh, air or whatever? This will air, what are we on? We're week-ish? on Wednesday. It'll be week-ish? next Friday. So we'll know probably by the release if Kawhi stayed with Toronto or not. Is it July 1st? Is that what it is? Is, is there a free agency um, day or whatever? I thought, Let me check the calendar. What right happened? I, I read a headline that he was. they were chanting one more year. I think he'll stay. There was a text that leaked that said uh, like uh, Kawhi's daughter just got enrolled at our school. That's good news, right, yeah. in Toronto. So. so your episode will be out on the 28th, 29th. Oh, so nice. we might not be know. Be days away. Be days away from the news. It'll be a cliffhanger. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm head bobbing. I'm in. Can we produce that? Are you guys any good at computers? No. Uh, I'm okay I'm at not. computers, but. You can tell I'm good at computers because <laughs> I phrase it like that. <laughs> yeah. You guys good at computers? I-, I can record and I can edit things yeah. out. <laughs> Sometimes edit things in. Cool, dude. Sometimes. Nice. Takes a lot, though. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. Nice. <laughs> Me too. Um,. What profession, other than your own, would you like to attempt? Uh, like uh, detective, like cop, but I want to skip all the bullshit years. I want to just get to the to the good shit. Hardened alcoholic years? <laughs> nah, man. Oh. Just sticking to the case, man. Like, I'm solving the case right now. I do a little vigilante work on the side. Uh, my buddy, his uh, phone and wallet just got stolen off his counter. Uh, his girlfriend left the garage open. Uh, he knows where a transaction was made with his stolen visa. We've already visited uh, said store and asked for the security footage. Happened to be a roadblock, but it's just temporary. We're still moving. Would the they case. give it to you? Probably not. No, they wouldn't. They're real stingy on, on footage, even with the cops. Um like, you know, doing those cop gigs with uh, Dan Frazier, like, he's a contact of mine. I have a couple of cops that I asked. I was like, can we get footage, you know? Like, is that a, yeah, is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, and it's just a little tough. And, like, I'm like, fucking go in the evidence locker and get the VHS. Let's go. I've seen the movies. I know how this is done. But they're like, no. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. My friend uh, Adam Ruby, comedian, choked a guy out in a Petro Canada recently. Uh, he discharged him, and he had to defend himself. Choked him out, and he wanted to get the tape. You know, for the Instagram, for the footage. Hell yeah. And uh, no, they didn't give it to him. Apparently there's big, I have a few security guards in my realm that I know. And apparently if you get caught filming or sharing any sort of security footage, you can get your pecker slapped hard. Oh yeah? Yeah, Being a security guard? Yeah. So like if you are a security guard and you put it to you this way, I've had friends Don't rat out other people. Exactly. They're like. You probably shouldn't see this, but watch this takedown. Sometimes you tackle a guy a little harder than you should, but whatever. Or their buddy. He deserved it. Allegedly, all those sorts of fabulous I got things. bitched out by a crackhead yesterday. Good. Well, not bitched out, but like she called me sexist because I wouldn't give her money. Good. I, w- I, I told Jesse I wished it was on film because it was. It would have been the best, like, trashy uh, uh, dash cam video ever. Oh, yeah? She's sh- So she comes up to me. I'm like. See her do it to three cars. She's demanding money from all these cars. And then I'm like, sorry, I don't have any. Like, sorry, no money. And then she's like, well, I see you all the time around here. And how come you never give me any money? And, like, I'm down the street every single day. I'm like, I've never seen you in my life. In fact, it's always some other crackhead walking up and down the street demanding money. You the word crackhead? I use the word crackhead. Crackhead or dude? There you go. I can't remember. I think it was crackhead. It might have been dude. I th- I think it might have been dude. I Big wrote difference. it down. I sent Big the difference. story. I sent the story to Cody because like I got to write this down and tell somebody before I keep changing shit. And I'm pretty the sure. Reason I asked, uh, the pretty re- sure it was dude. I'm pretty sure that's it was dude. what she tripped on you about. Yeah, I'm, you're right. It was dude. So I was like, oh no, there's some other dude walking up and down here. So because she prefaced with like, oh, you're not giving me money because I'm a girl and you're sexist. I was like, no, I don't give money. I see some other dude. 
Yeah. I don't fucking give. See, I told you I wouldn't be able to yeah. tell the story again. Because I give some other dude that, you know, I see some other dude walking up and down here. And she goes, see, you give him fucking money and not me. Then she starts losing her shit and screaming to other cars. So I did drop. I did drop. Bitch, I don't give assholes money. Fuck off. And that was that was when the light turned green. Oh she got behind me, <laughs> screaming at the top of her lungs, flailing in the road. I, I didn't hear her at that point. Oh. But when I left her, she was screaming, this guy's a sexist. Look at him. He's a sexist. And I was like. I didn't fucking do it. <laughs> it's not my fault. Yeah, it's lucky the camera wasn't pointed to you. Not to you, dude. It. You're I'm not doing it justice. You, you think the equality conversation doesn't extend to homeless people? <laughs> no, but equal rights for dude, homeless bitches that the are assholes. First thing that apparently. came to my head was like, oh, now homeless people are using the whole sexist thing to get money. That's right. What the fuck? Like yeah. that's how deep we've gone. Is that? I say, sorry, I don't have any money. And the wow. first response back is, yeah, yeah. fuck you, you're sexist. That's Wh- a guilt. It, it's a, sw- you know. It's a mind fuck. Against a softer person, uh, they, they might just be like, hey, take your money, shut up. Like, yeah. Don't call me that. That's like that's a bad word these days. So, yeah. Don't, don't well, it's call. it's a bad word anyway. Don't call anybody <laughs> a One bitch. One of the most aggressive homeless or... people I ran into was in Toronto when she was female. It's fe- the guys, you can give the guys a look on she fourth. Wasn't like... And they'll walk away from you. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you give a look like, don't walk up to me, and they'll walk away from you. She wasn't, like, physically aggressive or verbally. It was just she asked every single person that walked by her on a very busy street. It may have been Young Street, yeah. but or one of the roads leading up to Young Street. It was every single person that, they walk, that walked by her got a toonie, got a toonie, got a toonie, got a toonie to every single person. I'm like, that's not just change, but... You're asking for like two bucks. Yeah, it was odd to me. Not that it has any fucking relevance to these questions. Long story short, I don't give money to assholes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, homeless no people. I will help homeless people to the end. Don't fucking come at me with yeah, that yeah. shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, come nicer. Yeah, be nice. Pub- public yeah. service announcement brought to you by Jesse. Yeah, that's right. Don't be. Well, we got two questions left. The other yeah. one flips mm-hmm. on. Obviously, we have a theme here: pluses and minuses. Uh, what profession would you not want to do? Of uh, bottle service girl. Oh, right. Uh, wow, you have brought up I about knew this. something that yeah. I never thought about. I think that's one of the worst jobs I, f- I feel for them because um, you know exactly who you're catering to, like Ooh. the shittiest dudes of all time. Yeah. Like if you're going to spend $200 on a bottle of liquor, already I know you're, the, the jib you're cut from, yeah. right? The cut of your jib. And... uh and they're like out for pussy, you know, and you happen to be pussy <laughs> and you happen to be literally roped off with them. Red ropes confined to a four by four space. You're now in a cage Essentially, with them. Yeah. And your job is to like protect this bottle and protect your ass as well at the same time. And you're a blind. They're all to... over you and it's it's just gotta Ugh. be the worst, Ooh. man. The conversation and like just faking the drunk like the cleaner right. of outhouses sounds so much better. Yeah, dude, you don't want to be a bottle service girl. No. Maybe just a runner. Don't get, like, caught in the pen. You know what? Shout out to all the bottle service oh, girls out there. Respect. Hell yeah. Respect. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now for the final question, yeah. which we have recently altered. Yeah. If there is an afterlife and somebody greets you or something greets you, is there a phrase or something you'd like to hear them tell you about your life you just lived? Um, so I'm entering the afterlife of sorts, if there is one and they're greeting me and there's certain something from my life they're pulling from, they're saying to me, that would make me happy. Um, well, currently it would be like, uh, it'd be something like, ah, you're dead, but, uh, get over it. You know, water off a duck's back, kind of throw it in my face. Cause that's kind of a, a phrase I've been repeating lately. And it's kind of a, something I live my life by of like, get over it dip your duck head in the duck water and move on. Nice. And, uh, man, I was even out for, on my anniversary dinner with my girl one year, the other, just the other day. Congrats. And, uh, thanks. I, I blew it. I didn't do enough. She, oh. got, she got upset. We're in the middle of it right now. Um, hope she's not listening. Ah, I fucked up. <laughs> well, I didn't fuck up. I didn't know I fucked up. This is a whole nother hour. We don't have time for this. No. We'll hit this on version two. <laughs> Next time I'm back, I'll yeah. let you know if it worked out. The conclusion. <laughs> 
So, uh, but yeah, even like the waitress that she was doing the bill, she's like, I didn't want to say this, but like, I love your stand up. And like, uh, I literally like when something bad happens in my life, I literally say, I like water off a duck's back. She kind of repeated it to me. And that was nice. I was like, ah, like screw her laughing at my jokes, the ego of that. But like, she actually pulled something from it and lives her life maybe a little bit differently because of words I've said. Helps her. Yeah. <clears throat> that's amazing. That's, yeah. that's really cool. That would be great to enter. I yeah. like that. Good hang, boys. Good hang. Dude, yeah, thanks, Brent, thank you for coming. We I went know. deep. Like, what time we is it now? We went super deep. Ten something. Like, this is over two hour cast, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we're at, uh, we're at a proper Joe Rogan. This is three, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're at 244. Oh, yeah. Jeez. And uh, we don't edit out anything, really, unless you want something no. edited out. So no, it's all good. We're going hard. Well, Brett, where can we find you where, yeah, where in you, the next little bit? Yeah, what are your dates? What's going on? What's coming up? Yeah, you're going to want to start the cast with this. No <laughs> one's <laughs> here. No one's this is where everyone's anyway. tuned out. Everyone's gone. Um, Except yeah. Patrick. Patrick so, listens to the end. So Roast Battles is kind of like my Calgary bread and butter here. It's what I put on for this home city of mine. Um, once a month at Yuck Yucks. It's a Friday late show. So follow me on Instagram to find the next upcoming date. Hell yeah. Um, and then so the next one happens to be uh, July 19th. Dan Fraser, that cop comedian, is defending his title again. I have a headliner at the end. I have... Six comedians doing battle. If you lose, you get roasted some more by me and Sam Walker. There's a lot of <laughs> value to the show. <laughs> yeah. You get to see a lot more comedians than your average show, and you get to see a bit different of a style, as well as the more familiar style that you're more comfortable with. Just seeing straight stand-up, I give that to you at the beginning and end. So Exciting. You're walking away with something nice, and then um, that's really the main thing uh, to promo here. Otherwise, I'm just on the road, other cities and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. BrettForte.com. Yeah. Thank you. Correct. Thank you, Connie, for your time, man. Thank you for coming, man. We will uh, see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, much love. Fuck off. <laughs>